folding beds, free pillows on divans and beds, repairs on mattresses and bases, foam cut to any size and shape. Over 40 years experience in the mattress industry. Sleep right, Charleston Avenue, Culloden Road, St. Michael. Call 437-5337 or Happy Angel, Lowlands Price Church. Call 428-7805. Open Mondays to Saturdays. Sleep like a king and a queen. Vacancies exist for customs clerk, executor trained, mail, live-in cook, experienced cooks, front desk, night shift clerk, taxi, BT driver, truck mechanic, go-kart mechanic, housekeeping supervisor, cleaners, painter, freezer technician, night security driver, maid and cashiers. Apply at Furniture Limited, Cumberland Street, Bridgetown. Telephone 426-0068. Notices. The following persons are kindly asked to contact Creditel urgently at 424-5432 or after hours at 231-9457. Mr. Andrew Nichols, 2nd Avenue, Gills Gap, Eagle Hall, St. Michael. Miss Shakira Griffith, 3rd Avenue, Paris Gap, St. Michael. Miss Carell Harris, 7th Avenue, Austin Drive, Eden Lodge, St. Michael. Mr. Kevin Topping, Hinkson Land, School Gap, St. Michael. Miss Ermenta King, Thornwood, Christ Church. Mr. Andre Griffith, First Avenue, Accommodation Road, St. Michael. Miss Valine Taylor, Second Avenue, Gills Gap, Eagle Hall, St. Michael. And Mr. Brian David, First Avenue, Rosette, St. Michael. Anyone knowing of the whereabouts of these persons is asked to contact Creditel at 424-5432. The following persons are kindly asked to contact Creditel urgently at 424-5432 or after hours at 231-9457. Miss Marcia Boyce Field, 2nd Avenue, Gills Gap, St. Michael, or care of Roxy Supermarket, Eagle Hall, St. Michael. Miss Merlin Prescott, 3rd Avenue, Nurseland, Tweepside Road, St. Michael. Mr. Nigel Hinson, 3rd Avenue, East Terrace Road, St. Michael. Mr. Eric Marshall, 3rd Avenue, Goodland, St. Michael. Mr. Stafford Beckles, 3rd Avenue, Gazettes, St. Michael. Mr. Julian Baptiste, 3rd Avenue, Hearts Gap, St. Michael. Mr. Cornelius Noel, 3rd Avenue, Licorice Village, St. Michael. Or anyone knowing of these persons' whereabouts are asked to contact Creditel. The following persons are kindly asked to contact Creditel urgently at 424-5432 or after hours at 231-9457. Miss Tonya Critchlow, 2nd Avenue, Rowan Road, St. Michael, or care of Number One Beauty Supply, Tudor Street. Miss Charmaine Lashley, 3rd Avenue, Pickwick Yap, St. Michael. Mr. Chesterfield Walcott, 4th Avenue, Allingsland, St. Michael. Miss Shanette Bourne, 4th Avenue, Manning's Land, St. Michael. Miss Myrtle Paul Thompson, 4th Avenue, Pickwick Gap, St. Michael. Mr. Trevor Devonish, 5th Avenue, Skeets Road, St. Michael. Mr. Michael Brathwit, 3rd Avenue, Licorice Village, St. Michael. And Mr. Ike Payne, 3rd Avenue, New Orleans, St. Michael. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of these persons are asked to contact Creditel at 424-5432. It's here again. Lunch at the Tropical Winds Apartment Hotel every Sunday, 12 noon to 3 p.m. 65 Barbados dollars per person, tax inclusive. Children 5 to 12 years old, half price. Four years and under, free. Enjoy the month-end special the last Sunday in every month. One senior citizen, 65 years or older, sitting with a family of four, eats free on presentation of Barbados Identification Card. For details, call 423-0548. This sweetest radio station has landed. 94.7 FM, the station where the greatest hits from yesteryear come alive.
I'm talking to you. The sounds that make you feel good. Only one station delivers the soundtracks of your life. 94.7 FM with the greatest hits of the 70s, 80s, and 90s.
offers the most fantastic items, natural care products for high blood pressure, diabetes, pain and much more. Amaze offers the most fantastic items, natural care products for high blood pressure, diabetes, pains and much more. Amaze cell phone power banks, precious oils and moringa, gift items, a wide selection of bras, ladies and gents underwear, clothing, shoes, belts, scarves, beautiful handbags, wallets, costume and gold-filled jewelry, perfumes, cosmetics, hair accessories, energy cups, linens, mats, portable ACs, dryers, remote control toys and much more. Prices starting at just 25 cents. Amaze, number 12 and 13, Harvest Plaza, Oyston's Christchurch. Call 420-7809. Open Mondays to Fridays, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Come in and be amazed. We have what you need. Yes, it's true. Light goods driving lessons, $40 per hour. Driving test, $150. And assistance with regulation test. Douglas Driving College is a cut above the rest. With 37 years in the driving fraternity, a certified and trained driving instructor. Better and cheaper. Guaranteed or your money back. Contact 236-9652 or 572-0192. The deals are always on at the Liberty Store. This is how we flow. Flow prepaid mobile phones from $55 and up. Alcatel Pop C2 Android phone from Flow only $149. Tough and rugged Plum Ram Flow phone only $145. All Flow prepaid phones come with a SIM card and credit. Call your friend right away. This is how we flow. Liberty Store, number 8 Swan Street. They also have Blue Touch screen Android phones from $198. Unlocked, dual SIM, dual camera, ready for you. Call 436-7554.
The jewels are always shining at Italian Jewelry located in Mall 34 on Broad Street. The big sale is on. Get 50 to 60% discount off selected jewelry. There's a full range of 10, 14 and 18 karat jewelry and white gold. Chains, diamond three-piece sets, birth stone rings, gold bobs and hoops, bangles, bracelets and lots of brand name watches for the entire family. A new collection of black and white diamonds, chocolate and blue diamonds. Two and three piece wedding sets and beautiful engagement rings all certified. They also buy gold. Call them at 431-9184. At Gitu's Jewelry, Colonnade Mall, Broad Street, get 50% to 60% off all diamond jewelry. In stock, a new collection of Nicole Lee handbags with matching wallets, black and white diamonds, chocolate and blue diamonds. There are 50 new styles in two and three piece wedding sets and a beautiful collection of engagement rings all certified. Get a big 50% off all gold and silver jewelry and the big collection of brand name watches including the Anne Klein collection and G-Shock. Italian and gold earrings, tricolor, earrings, huggies, studs, sleepers and hoops. Also white gold, rose gold and rose silver jewelry. Visit them today and save big. Call them at 426-1902. Sleep like a king, wake up like a prince for the rest of your life. Sleep right, the mattress professionals, only factory prices. Our beds have not crossed the ocean, they are 100% Beijing. Mattresses, divans, bunk beds, pillows, folding beds, free pillows on divans and beds, repairs on mattresses and bases, foam cut to any size and shape. Over 40 years experience in the mattress industry. Sleep right, Charleston Avenue, Culloden Road, St. Michael. Call 437-5337 or Happy Angel, Lowlands Price Church. Call 428-7805. Open Mondays to Saturdays. Sleep like a king and a queen. Vacancies exist for customs clerk Asicuda trained, mill, live-in cook, experienced cooks, front desk night shift clerk, taxi, BT driver, truck mechanic, go-kart mechanic, housekeeping supervisor, cleaners, painter, freezer technician, night security driver, maid and cashiers. Apply at Furniture Limited, Cumberland Street, Bridgetown. Telephone 426-0068. Notices. The following persons are kindly asked to contact Creditel urgently at 424-5432 or after hours at 231-9457. Mr. Andrew Nichols, 2nd Avenue, Gills Gap, Eagle Hall, St. Michael. Miss Shakira Griffith, 3rd Avenue, Paris Gap, St. Michael. Miss Carell Harris, 7th Avenue, Austin Drive, Eden Lodge, St. Michael. Mr. Kevin Topping, Hinkson Land, School Gap, St. Michael. Miss Ermenta King, Thornwood, Christ Church. Mr. Andre Griffith, First Avenue, Accommodation Road, St. Michael. Miss Valine Taylor, Second Avenue, Gills Gap, Eagle Hall, St. Michael. And Mr. Brian David, First Avenue, Rosette, St. Michael. Anyone knowing of the whereabouts of these persons is asked to contact Creditel at 424-5432. The following persons are kindly asked to contact Creditel urgently at 424-5432 or after hours at 231-9457. Miss Marcia Boyce Field, 2nd Avenue, Gills Gap, St. Michael, or care of Roxy Supermarket, Eagle Hall, St. Michael. Miss Merlin Prescott, 3rd Avenue, Nurseland, Tweedside Road, St. Michael. Mr. Nigel Hinson, 3rd Avenue, East Terrace Road, St. Michael. Mr. Eric Marshall, 3rd Avenue, Goodland, St. Michael. Mr. Stafford Beckles, 3rd Avenue, Gazettes, St. Michael. Mr. Julian Baptiste, 3rd Avenue, Hearts Gap, St. Michael. Mr. Cornelius Noel, 3rd Avenue, Lickridge Village, St. Michael. Or anyone knowing of these persons' whereabouts are asked to contact Creditel. The following persons are kindly asked to contact Creditel urgently at 424-5432 or after hours at 231-9457. Miss Tonya Critchlow, 2nd Avenue, Rowan Road, St. Michael, or care of Number 1 Beauty Supply, Tudor Street. Miss Charmaine Lashley, 3rd Avenue, Pickwick Yap, St. Michael. 
Mr. Chesterfield Walcott, Fourth Avenue, Allings Land, St. Michael. Miss Shanette Bourne, Fourth Avenue, Manning's Land, St. Michael. Miss Myrtle Paul Thompson, Fourth Avenue, Pickwick Gap, St. Michael. Mr. Trevor Devonish, Fifth Avenue, Skeets Road, St. Michael. Mr. Michael Brathwit, Third Avenue, Lickridge Village, St. Michael, and Mr. Ike Payne, Third Avenue, New Orleans, St. Michael. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of these persons are asked to contact Creditel at 424-5432. It's here again. Lunch at the Tropical Winds Apartment Hotel every Sunday, 12 noon to 3 p.m. 65 Barbados dollars per person, tax inclusive. Children 5 to 12 years old, half price. Four years and under, free. Enjoy the month end special, the last Sunday in every month. One senior citizen, 65 years or older, sitting with a family of four, eats free on presentation of Barbados identification card. For details, call 423-0548. This sweetest radio station has landed. 94.7 FM, the station where the greatest hits from yesteryear come alive. Shut up, shut up, I'm talking to you. The sounds that make you feel good. Only one station delivers the soundtracks of your life. 94.7 FM with the greatest hits of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. When 
whole world is on your case I could offer you a warm embrace To make you feel my love When the evening shadows and the stars appear And there is no one there to dry your tears See, I could hold you for a million years To make you feel my love And I know you haven't made your mind up yet But I will never do you wrong There's no doubt in my mind where you belong I'd go hungry, I'd go black and blue And I'll go crawling down the avenue No, there's nothing that I wouldn't do To make you feel my love Barbados. The following is a paid commercial program. The Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation assumes no responsibility for its content. I'd like to address a very important issue that is affecting our lives on a daily basis, chronic inflammation and how it's destroying our health and way of life. The foods we eat today are not as balanced and are heavy in omega-6s and extremely weak in omega-3s. Diet is a very important factor regarding the symptoms of inflammation, which may cause pain and disease associated with back pain, arthritis, asthma, cardiovascular disease, stroke, heart attacks, and even Alzheimer's. Remember, omega-6 foods are pro-inflammatory, which means it causes inflammation in the body. 95% of the foods we consume are loaded with omega-6. Omega XL gets to the root of this problem and reduces the inflammation associated with disease and the pain we experience. Omega XL contains natural anti-inflammatory properties and are very important to achieve a balanced and healthy body. Research has shown making Omega XL a regular part of your diet along with healthy choices such as adding vegetables, fruits and exercise, consuming less red meat, fried and oily foods and artificial sugars along with a moderate consumption of alcohol to your diet. If you include these health tips, Omega XL will help you reduce the chronic inflammation associated with pain and disease and get you back to the life you enjoy. Live long and stay strong. Did you know that according to PAHO, the presence of heart disease in Trinidad and Tobago is double that of North America? 
Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. This means inflammation sets the stage for heart attacks, most strokes, and even vascular dementia, a cause of memory loss. With Omega XL, you can now lower high triglyceride levels and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. When it comes to fighting inflammation, Omega XL has no equal. It is the purest, most powerful, small, and easy to swallow all natural Omega 3 gel capsule available today. And because it offers no side effects, Omega XL is safe to take with your current heart medication. So, to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. We want to tell you about the Larry King Cardiac Foundation. I started it 25 years ago, and Sean is our chair. Our mission, to save hearts. Why? Because cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of American men. It's also the number one cause of death in American women, costing us 400,000 moms, sisters, and daughters each year. It's the cause of one in four deaths for men. But regardless of your gender, certain lifestyle behaviors impact your chance of developing heart disease in the first place. Now, there's nothing you can do about family history or age, but you can take control and drastically minimize risks by doing simple things. Exercise regularly and eat a healthy diet, including heart-healthy supplements. Prevention is the key. That's right. So our foundation is dedicated not only to helping those who have heart disease, we are actively fighting to bring those numbers down by pushing prevention. Exercise and good nutrition. We're casting that message far and wide. Please join us. Help spread the word. Together, we can build a heart-healthy future. Join the movement. Find us on Facebook or www.lkcf.org. The following is a paid advertisement for Omega XL. My name is Larry King. You know, a few years ago, I had to have open heart surgery. When I recovered, I established the Larry King Cardiac Foundation to help people like me avoid heart problems with proper foods, medication, and a healthy lifestyle. Well, I recently met Ken Mears, a man with similar goals. He's the founder and CEO of Great HealthWorks, and for 25 years has been active in creating and promoting good health. Well, Ken has developed and tested a product called Omega XL. Now, we've all heard about the benefits of a daily dose of fish oil. But they tell me that Omega XL takes a giant leap forward towards maintaining good health. Now, we're also going to speak to Dr. Sharon McQuillan, a board-certified and family practice specializing in anti-aging and preventative medicines. When we return, the doctor and Ken will explain how Omega XL can help you. Living a long and healthy life, surrounded by the people you love and enjoying every moment to the fullest is what every day should be about. But if you're experiencing joint pain, discomfort, and immobility day in and day out, it is difficult to enjoy your life. Now you can get rid of pain and recover your active lifestyle with an all-natural, revolutionary anti-inflammatory that has more available omega-3s and is more powerful than regular fish oil. It's time to experience results you can feel with Omega XL, the brand of wellness. Someone introduced me to Omega XL and I have almost forgotten about the pain. It's that incredible. Omega XL is far greater than just about any fish oil that I've ever taken, and I've been taking fish oil for many years. I'm so thankful that I have Omega XL in my life, and uh, I wouldn't go one day without it. Pain really changes who you are. It got to the point where I even thought about, am I gonna be able to do another season? Now, I, I say as many seasons as they wanna have, because I'm ready for it. This is a, a product that helps you live a healthy life. And that's something that I want to share with as many people as possible. Take your Omega XL. Most fish oils use a heating method to process their product. Researchers have found that heating Omega-3s can reduce their potency. Some fish oil can also have side effects, such as fishy aftertaste or heartburn, among others. But now, there's a safe, natural way to relieve your pain and inflammation. 
Omega XL is derived from the green-lipped mussel, which is sustainably farmed in the purest waters in the world, the Marlboro Sound in New Zealand. Unlike ordinary fish oil, Omega XL is a small, safe, and easy-to-swallow gel capsule with no known side effects. It is so convenient, you won't even notice it as part of your daily routine. Ken, we'll start with you. What is Omega XL? Omega XL is a one-of-a-kind Omega-3. There's nothing like it. We believe it's the most powerful Omega-3 on the face of the planet, which offers tremendous anti-inflammatory benefits. Dr. McQuillan, why should I take it? It is the most potent natural anti-inflammatory that exists. It actually is very effective in treating the pain and the uh, symptoms of inflammation. So pain, swelling, like arthritic joints, uh, back pain, uh, swollen joints, things that cause disability. Omega XL is, in my medical opinion, the best anti-inflammatory product for your health. Are you saying that this is better than fish oil? Much better than fish oil. No mm -hmm. question about it. I'll tell you why. Fish oil, you have no idea where the fish came from. And when right. you're swallowing something, you should care what you're putting in your body. A great deal of the fish oil comes from some of the dirtiest waters in the world. They don't take the filet and give that to, you, to the fish oil products. The filet many times goes to different restaurants and other types of foods. They take what's remaining of the fish, probably 49 to 50% of the head, the bones, the tail, grind it all up, and that's what goes in the majority of fish oil on the shelf today. Who wants to swallow that? Here with Omega XL, you're taking a green lip mussel that's grown on vines, suspended in the purest waters in the world, never touched the ocean floor, no heavy metals. You don't have the lead, the zinc, the mercury, and all the heavy metals that are found in fish oil, and when they bake fish oil and try to make it to get rid of all those heavy metals, they bake most of the benefits of the omega-3 out of it, where Omega XL is pure, powerful, potent, one of a kind, easy to swallow. As a stem cell scientist, I think it's important to do research on anything that you would place into your body. I think it's important to only use natural type supplements. Having said that, I do not use any other supplement other than Omega XL. I was definitely a little skeptical at first, but once you try it, I swear to you, you'll never, you'll never stop. I want to tell everybody, I'm telling you about it. I'm telling you about something that's going to change your life if you'll try it. Before Omega XL, my hands would ache throughout the day. Grasping just was so painful. And then when I started the Omega XL, the improvement was almost immediate. Within a few weeks, I was just more comfortable. It's changed my life. If you're living in pain, listen up. Everyday people suffer from symptoms including back, neck, knee, and joint pain. Studies have proven that inflammation is the culprit, but now you can fight it. Switch to Omega XL and experience results you can feel. Visit your local pharmacy and health food stores today. You no longer have to live with your pain. Put an end to your pain with Omega XL. Start taking control of your pain once and for all. Live long and stay strong with Omega XL. Stop in and get your Omega XL today. But I don't have to worry about those aches and pains as, you know, since I've been taking the Omega XL. Omega XL, thank you very much for changing my life and I will be a loyal customer for life. When I took the Omega XLs, the only thing that I can say is it made me feel great. Due to its unique cold extraction process, Omega XL comes in a free fatty acid form, which your body doesn't have to break down and can absorb easily. Therefore, Omega XL is more effective than ordinary fish oil at reducing inflammation, the cause of your pain. Regular fish oil comes in a triglyceride form, and your body has to break it down in order to absorb it, which takes time. Your body is not able to absorb these fatty acids as effectively as the free fatty acids in Omega XL. Fish oils generally, though, have an aftertaste. It causes, and they also cause burping, which I used to have a problem with that, mm -hmm. and I don't anymore. Sure. Does your product have these side effects? No, it really doesn't. I'll tell you why. We brought some fish oil capsules. These are the standard fish oil capsules with their 1,000 milligram. Anybody who takes and, and fish you, oil product knows this product. Exactly. Or you can take a small Omega XL capsule, which one of these is equivalent to 10 of these. Let me pour 10 in your hand, Larry. You'd have to take all 10 of these to get the benefits of one small Omega XL capsule. So women and children and, and men, nobody wants to swallow 10 minivans, if you will. 
You can well, how can you get all this in this? Well, I think the doctor can, can answer that. Why is such a unique formulation? The difference in the quality of the oil is the extraction process gives us something called a free fatty acid, which is the type of fatty acid that your body can utilize. Whereas in this fish oil capsule, the reason it has to be so big is that this is the triglyceride form, which means that it's bound and your body can't utilize it readily. When you take this, this is just fatty acids that can go directly into your system and they can be effective for reducing your inflammation. Well, there's something very important also. In today's world with a doctor here, the average person over 55 today is on five different prescription medications. Omega XL has no drug-drug interaction, which is so important. The improper use of prescription medication is probably the sixth cause of death today. So you have people that have difficulty sleeping at night, aches and pains cause loss of sleep, and they worry about the medicine they're taking. Omega XL releases that fear of is it going to interact with my other drugs, and it reduces the inflammatory pain that you may have in your back, your legs, and so on, to give you a good night's sleep. I've got to say, I've done very few testimonials in my life. You can count them in one hand, and this is a terrific product. It's wonderful being associated with you. I have been uh, practicing medicine for over 20 years, and I have never endorsed a product either. Really? And I just feel that this product is so valuable and so important that uh, it's a privilege to be associated with it. Thank you. I'm going to take two now. Well, I, I will add this, and this is one thing. 80% of our customers are women that call in to buy our product. The women are the gatekeepers of the family's health. Mm -hmm. Grandmothers are able to now bend over and pick up their grandchild when the grandchild's running toward them instead of saying, no, 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 grandma's back hurts. So you have this aging society, this active society, this active lifestyle, and everyone wants to move and breathe naturally. They want to be able to get up. They want to be able to walk. They want to be able to enjoy themselves. It is a life-changing product that is just truly one of a kind. And by the way, they're so small that I just swallowed them without water. You have hundreds of people, hundreds of family, and call them employees, but associates at Great Hill for today, so proud that you're here to help us with our message. There's two different benefits that I've noticed by taking Omega XL, one being the increased benefit of not having uh, to worry about uh, stiffness or joint problems. The other benefit has been the difference I've seen in my skin. I'm amazed at how many people that I talk to suffer from some sort of back, back discomfort, usually in the lower back, and I have recommended Omega XL numerous occasions and will continue to do so, and I'll be on it for life. The Omega XL capsule is so small that it's just, it's so simple to swallow. You get most of these pills that have, that, that are huge to take, to swallow. It's, you know, it's, it's very hard, but these, uh, the Omega XL capsules are very small, very easy to take. You have to know the pain that you've been through in order to know how much better you feel with the Omega XL. Switch to Omega XL and experience results you can feel. Visit your local pharmacy and health food stores today. You no longer have to live with your pain. Put an end to your pain with Omega XL. Start taking control of your pain once and for all. Live long and stay strong with Omega XL. Stop in and get your Omega XL today. Why is it so effective, Ken? Why is it so effective? It's one of a kind. It truly is one of a kind. There's been 25 years of research. It comes from a green lip muscle. Nature has provided an oil extract that's one of a kind. It's patent protected. This is a nutritional supplement, and what it can do is reduce the signs and symptoms associated with inflammation. People say, well, how can this be so good? Well, because the biggest problem to your body is inflammatory-related conditions. It doesn't matter if you're a truck driver, if you're a police officer, if you're a fireman, if you work uh, in the construction. Uh, if you work in the restaurant business, if you are a lady that stands on your feet all day. Almost if you move. If you move. <laughs> because pain just ruins your day. You're looking at someone. Ruins your day. I have a it's low tolerance. It's hard to enjoy <laughs> your life. Everybody has a low tolerance. Particularly when you have back pain. Back pain will, will strike 80% of everyone in their lifetime. And it's an overuse condition. Chronic. Chronic back pain. So when you have back pain, you have arthritic pain particularly if you use your body for your work. Do you know that insurance companies today, with all the crazy things that are going on in our insurance world, 
one of the first questions they're asking you when you fill out your form to get new insurance is, does any part of your body hurt when you come home from work? So they know that we're overusing our bodies, which tend to cause more corrective action, which cause the rates to go up to keep you in great shape. So healthcare, while it's important, the important word is self-care. If you don't do something for yourself, Omega XL is the beginning of, of self-care. Now you can get rid of pain and recover your active lifestyle with an all-natural, revolutionary anti-inflammatory that has more available omega-3s and is more powerful than regular fish oil. Having danced for, what, 25 years now, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very normal to have aches and pains. We've sustained a lot of injuries as dancers. I am a big fan of anything that's natural, not invasive doesn't have side effects and improves uh, what is it that we do. Omega Excel allows me to continue being in front of you know, the scenes in the spotlight, still dancing and still dancing on a, on a high level and, and I, I appreciate that. There's no doubt at all in my mind that taking Omega 3 every day is a very good way of ensuring that for well people that they stay well and for people who aren't well that they get better. There's so much evidence that that's the case. And if you're going to do that, why not take the best? Omega XL is the best. Omega XL is a one-of-a-kind powerful omega-3 oil that helps to reduce inflammation associated with joint pain, muscle soreness, immobility, and more. Omega XL is the ultimate natural solution in great health and well-being. I was ready to pretty much try anything because I was sore. I was real sore. I didn't want to be weighed down by pain. I didn't want to I didn't want to accept it that I was getting older and that pain was starting to take over. So with Omega XL, I fully believe in Omega XL. It allows me to sleep better. It allows me to be more a part of each and every day. I have clarity and focus like I haven't had before. I'm on my feet 10 hours a day at least. I had knee surgery like four years ago. There was a lot of inflammation after the surgery. I was in so much pain. The tears would come to my eyes. That's how much pain I was in. And well, you know, my knee is bending so much better now and that inflammation is going away. And that is because of Omega XL. So inflammation is the culprit. It's the culprit. And then it makes the joint unstable and then that makes it worse, and it's like a snowball rolling downhill. All of a sudden, the condition just gets worse and worse. So if we can control inflammation, and Omega XL has been shown to be 100 times more powerful than other fish oils in controlling the inflammation, we can control the pain and the disability and actually help maintain a healthier joint. It's everyday life. People that drive trucks, firemen, people that stand on their feet all day, women who are hairdressers, Whatever you do, we're overusing our bodies. We're right. living longer and we're wearing our joints out faster because we're more involved with sports at a later age, golfing, lower back inflammation. You know, so it's part of our lives that is causing these problems. Can you tell me from your experience how Omega XL has improved people's lives? By the hundreds of thousands. Uh, I'll start with you. <laughs> when we started to talk about you doing this program, you said, I want to send it to family and friends. Correct. And how did that work out? Worked out terrific. I used to, when I get up in the morning, it was to put on my socks, to bend over to put on my, I used to have, it was really pain. I don't have it anymore. So this is not a, a music show. This is not a sports show. This is a show about pain care. So when someone watches this program, either they have pain or someone they know has pain. And here's a very powerful and frightening statistic. Today there are 60 million women between 40 and 60 who are acting as caregivers to their mothers. And the daughter from 40 to 60 is using their body up, having more pain prematurely at a younger age than ever before. You have 100 million people in the U.S. today over 50 years old. And in a few short years, you'll have 70 million people over 65. Inflammation is going to play a devastating role in our society unless you can control it. Living a long and healthy life, surrounded by the people you love and enjoying every moment to the fullest is what every day should be about. But if you're experiencing joint pain, discomfort and immobility day in and day out, it is difficult to enjoy your life. 
Now you can get rid of pain and recover your active lifestyle with an all-natural, revolutionary anti-inflammatory that has more available omega-3s and is more powerful than regular fish oil. It's time to experience results you can feel with Omega XL, the brand of wellness. I would not go without Omega XL because it's made a huge impact in my daily life. Uh, a lot of hard work out there, fighting fires, riding the rescue trucks, the tank, the gear, the helmet, the mask, everything. You're carrying about 80 pounds, so I had to make a change myself and I changed to Omega XL, which I'm here today. If you're living in pain, listen up. Everyday people suffer from symptoms including back, neck, knee, and joint pain. Studies have proven that inflammation is the culprit. Switch to Omega XL and experience results you can feel. Visit your local pharmacy and health food stores today. You no longer have to live with your pain. Put an end to your pain with Omega XL. Start taking control of your pain once and for all. Live long and stay strong with Omega XL. Stop in and get your Omega XL today. How does it help Dr. Chronic Pain? It actually affects 53 different pathways that cause inflammation in your body. And in that regard, it's unique. I mean, osteoarthritis, which affects currently 50 million Americans, is the wear and tear arthritis. And as we get older, we're going to have more symptoms and more disability. But it comes from um, a small injury in the joint or maybe a sports injury in the joint that creates inflammation. All right, how about people who are allergic? to things like uh, shellfish. shellfish. Yeah. You're actually allergic to the protein in the shellfish. We extract all the protein, all the carbohydrate, and all the sodium. So this is an allergy-free omega-3. There's nothing like it. Doctor, have you had any personal experience with your patients' uh, results that they had with the product? I've had consistently great results with everyone that I've tried the product with. It is just unbelievable for back pain, uh, back pain relief. And Your it, patients are happy with it. My patients are happy with it and it's easy for them to take and I can honestly say before I knew about this product I would recommend fish oil but I mean they just couldn't take it because of the side effects the dyspepsia and, and the size of the pills so I'm hopeful that really everybody would try this product and I think that it would improve the health of anyone who would take it. I wish that it had the Mega XL 30 years ago. I've been now playing golf and I noticed the great effects from being able to do that. I might be able to exercise after 25 years of not being able to exercise. I tried other other avenues of pills or vitamins to try and and help with these aches and pains in my joints and my bones but uh, it wasn't until I started taking Omega XL that that was when it switched for me and the pain went away and it went away fast. Most fish oils use a heating method to process their product. Researchers have found that heating omega-3s can reduce their potency. Some fish oil can also have side effects, such as fishy aftertaste or heartburn, among others. But now, there's a safe, natural way to relieve your pain and inflammation. Omega XL is derived from the green-lipped mussel, which is sustainably farmed in the purest waters in the world, the Marlboro Sound in New Zealand. Unlike ordinary fish oil, Omega XL is a small, safe, and easy-to-swallow gel capsule with no known side effects. It is so convenient, you won't even notice it as part of your daily routine. You know, doctor, I'm involved with cardiac health, having had the problems myself. I have my foundation. How can Omega XL help reduce the risk of heart attacks. 30 years of studies that have shown the benefits of omega-3s for reducing plaque formation on the arteries, which actually clog the arteries. It actually helps to reduce triglyceride levels. I recommend Omega XL to all of my patients to help protect their hearts, preserve their heart um, and vascular health. Ken, Omega XL seems to be a life-changing product. Omega XL is a one-of-a-kind Omega-3. There's nothing like it. We believe it's the most powerful Omega-3 on the face of the planet, which offers tremendous anti-inflammatory benefits. You have hundreds of people, hundreds of family, and call them employees, but associates at Great Health for today, so proud that you're here to help us with our message. Well, I'm very proud to be part of it, because it is. It's, it's, it's wonderful being associated with this, and wonderful having you, and wonderful meeting you. Well, we're passionate about it. 
put an end to your pain with Omega XL. Start taking control of your pain once and for all. Other Omega-3s may bring you discomfort due to their side effects. Most of them are very hard to swallow, along with the embarrassing fishy aftertaste. In order to get their benefits, you have to take a higher dosage, which results in having to buy product more often and, in the long run, spending more money. Don't suffer another day. Now, with Omega XL, you can get more benefits in a powerful, potent, small, easy to swallow, and very convenient gel capsule. Switch to Omega XL and experience results you can feel. You'll get relief from your aches, pains, and discomfort. The key to the way that we process things is we manage the temperature, we manage the storage chain, we know the chemistry we're looking for and we make really sure that we're getting the right chemistry to the consumer. I can't say that any of the people who are selling seafood mussels are going to be concerned about the same thing. You may cook it in a way or deal with it in a way that simply destroys that bioactivity. So not only are you taking a dozen mussels, you may be getting no benefit. So the certain way of getting the benefit is to take a capsule and that's so convenient it's a tiny little capsule, it's dead easy to take, and you can be sure about what the outcome will be. Omega XL is a one-of-a-kind powerful omega-3 oil that helps to reduce inflammation associated with joint pain, muscle soreness, immobility, and more. Omega XL is the ultimate natural solution in great health and well-being. Omega XL not only helped my hand, it helped my whole body. I can walk around, I can move around, my hand, I can make fists, I can stretch my fingers, I can turn my hands around without extreme pain. It all has come together because of Omega XL. Well, I had uh, two compressed discs. I went to see a very renowned back specialist here in Miami and uh, was told there was really nothing I could do for it, not even surgery. Uh, but I started taking the Omega XL and in about 72 hours, I started noticing a, a significant difference in my back and, and the swelling was a lot less. It was really an answer to prayer. I, I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I have children down to a very young age and I want to be active with them as long as I can. It, it's allowed me to keep up with them and experience good things. And that's thanks to Omega XL, no doubt about it. If you're living in pain, listen up. Everyday people suffer from symptoms including back, neck, knee, and joint pain. Studies have proven that inflammation is the culprit, but now you can fight it. Switch to Omega XL and experience results you can feel. Visit your local pharmacy and health food stores today. You no longer have to live with your pain. Put an end to your pain with Omega XL. Start taking control of your pain once and for all. Live long and stay strong with Omega XL. Stop in and get your Omega XL today. The preceding has been a paid advertisement for Omega XL. Did you know that according to PAHO, the presence of heart disease in Trinidad and Tobago is double that of North America? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. This means inflammation sets the stage for heart attacks, most strokes, and even vascular dementia, a cause of memory loss. With Omega XL, you can now lower high triglyceride levels and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. When it comes to fighting inflammation, Omega XL has no equal. It is the purest, most powerful, small, and easy to swallow all natural Omega 3 gel capsule available today. And because it offers no side effects, Omega XL is safe to take with your current heart medication. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. The following is a paid commercial program. The Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation assumes no responsibility for its content. You're watching CBC TV 8 in beautiful Barbados. Breakfast in Barbados. Welcome back to Breakfast in Barbados. And of course, we are at the beautiful Santosha in St. Andrew. And with me is Jackie Pinder, and she's from the Community Development Department. How are you, Jackie? I am good this morning. Good morning to one and all. 
fantastic. And we're going to have some samples for you. Chef Tosh is going to get busy with the cooking, so you're going to experience a real breakfast in Barbados. Oh. But tell me all about the Community Development Department and what you do. The Community Development Department is a social work agency, and we offer a number of courses to the Barbadian public, and sometimes majority of these courses are free of cost. For example, we have the Community Technology Program, mm -hmm. and with the Community Technology Program, we offer basic information technology. This course costs about 3000 but at the development department, this course is free. And it's ah. open to all ages from 16 plus. So you could be 60, you could be 80, and you're interested in computer classes. The community development department is the place for you to sign up. So why are you offering that class? Because it's something that was mandated by the government of Barbados. Okay. Uh, right. So your aim is basically to get everyone, if possible, to be computer literate. Correct, that okay. is the aim. So we offer, we have for the adults, we have computer repairs. We also have a community arts program. And when they say the community arts program, you learn to do drawing and illustration, airbrushing, and computer graphics. And then recently we had the community technology X for Teens program, mm -hmm. the X for Teens summer program. And this is sponsored by Flo and the graduation was only this Friday at the Sherman Conference Center. We okay. have over 300 children um, wow, graduated, yes, and the ages were from 11 to, to 16. Okay. And the children learned computer graphics, drawing and illustration, and a, a number of other um, applications related to really how to do business cards, flyers, the whole works. Oh, nice. And that was free of cost. Free, free, free. And it was a six weeks program. Wow. That sounds really, really good. <laughs> now, when you said earlier, I thought about the older folk. What has been the, what has the response been like for older people? Because, you know, some people think, eh, I can't learn at this point. So you have that person who's probably in their 50s and didn't do a lot of computer stuff. What's the response like with the older the folks? response, The older persons, the response has been great. Mm -hmm. It is the younger ones that we are not seeing coming to the program. Wow. Yes. For example, we find that we're getting the, the mature folks for our basic computing and our advanced. But it's the younger ones that we are really not capturing. So we're trying to see if we could encourage the younger persons to come up to the program. So is it that um, you're not capturing them or the younger folk don't know about the program? It, it could be that, but it might be a number of things, which I really won't be able to say at this time, but we do do the normal advertisement. We do do the normal word of mouth, where we try to get in contact with various community groups in the area, letting them know that the program is there and is free of cost. And then we have our community resource centers within the community. But yet still we are finding that we are having women more so than men participating in the program. Ooh. But what we found is that um, with other programs, it might be slightly different. With the computer repairs now, the men will more okay. come out than the women. Okay. But more often than not, within the Community Development Department, we are seeing more women coming to our programs. So we are trying to encourage our young men and our mature men to be part of the community programs. And these programs are free of cost and you get to learn a skill that if you're interested you could take it to another level where you could generate income okay we focused a bit on the computer side of things what other kinds of courses do we you have offer? the community impact program the community impact program we would say is a skill based income generating program where the participants will learn nail technology mm -hmm. hair braiding weaving wig making hospitality studies, and the list go on. But these programs are according to the needs of the community. For example, in the Grisettes area, you will find that the persons might be more interested in nail technology. But when you go to the, the St. Mark's Resource Center, you will find up there is doing hospitality studies. Okay. So some things is according to the needs of the community, what the community want at that particular time that the community development officer and the center officer would would implement the program. Well, I noticed a very interesting link between what you were saying about attracting mainly females and the list of courses that you just <laughs> offered. It sounds like a lot of the courses would attract females rather than males. Are there any other courses that you'd say would be more male 
we oriented. Have, I forget to mention barbering because we do have barbering. I don't know. Sometimes it might have to do with the administrative side of things. Because sometimes, although you might say the course might be implemented in two weeks, due to getting the approval and such, like it might take four weeks. And sometimes when you go out in the community and you're asking the persons um, what you're interested, you find that the women are more sure of what they want okay. than our men. Okay. So it is a number of factors. So we at the department are looking at those to see how we could get our men involved in the educational component of their empowering themselves mm -hmm. and also hoping that they could generate some income as time goes on. How about career changes? Um, there's some people who go through life, they've done X, Y, Z, and all of a sudden, I've always wanted to be a nail tech, or I want, always wanted to do hair. Do you find there are people who kind of go through a career change? Yes, that is true. For, for example, we had a nail class at Grisette's Resort Center, and this young lady was saying that she was driving taxi. I think then she was employed in the hotel sector, and she realized that she wanted to do nail technology. So she came on the course hoping to improve her skills so that she could generate a little side income to help for her everyday living. So we find that we have a number of those persons who will change or who might be retired or who might be laid off and they need something to do. Wow. Uh -huh. And it's not only that we offer the program, but the end result is that we try to generate income. For example, we went to the National Council Foundation Spice Town Market and Pan Around the Town where we had a beauty center at the Spice Town Resort Center. So persons could have come to the but it's not resource center mm -hmm. to get their nails done, get eyebrows, get their eyebrows fitted, and that w and manicures and pedicures. So this was all and free yes. of cost? Was, no, was no, a nominal students? fee, a nominal okay, fee. Okay, so this was students of the program? Students of the program. Also so just doing some practical mm -hmm. skills. Okay, I got and, you. And the, 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 the fee was nominal, $35 from 30 to $10. Okay. Uh -huh. So it wasn't bad. So you could have come and had a, a manicure or pedicure, which would normally cost 60 to $80, being done for about $35 or so. All right, Jackie, you have a lot to say, and we want to hear what you have to say. We'll be right back on Breakfast in Barbados. Breakfast in Barbados. Make it great, make it fun, sweet tuna. L and Bear L and Bear L and Bear L and Bear How do you L and Bear? Take a moment to L and Bear with your options of Yago, fruits and 0% fat yogurts made from real milk using real fruits. Distributed by Supreme Distributors. Breakfast in Barbados. We're back. Breakfast in Barbados. And with me is Jackie Pinder from the Community Development Department. We're going to be talking about Community Dance Fest, but we want to get to know Jackie a bit more. Jackie, exactly what do you do? I am the Community Development Officer at the Community Development Department. And what areas? What areas? Because we as, know. Right. As the community development officer, you're assigned various areas. For example, my area is St. Thomas, St. Peter, and part of St. Michael. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And within those areas, we, we don't have any community center as yet within the St. Thomas area, but we have about three community, three community slash resource centers mm -hmm. in the St. Peter area. That is Black Bess, Spite Song, Resource Center, and then we have the Bosco Bell Community Center. And then you go to the St. Michael's area where I am in charge of the Grisettes Resource Center, Eden Lodge Community Center, and Jackson Community Center. That sounds like a lot of area to cover, especially yes, St. Michael, is. where you have that densely populated areas. Both, all three of those areas, actually, that you mentioned, the last Correct. three, densely populated. Okay, let's go on to the next project that you guys work on and mm -hmm. have going on. That is the, the HIV AIDS program. This is another program that has been mandated by the government of Barbados. Mm -hmm. 
I can't remember the exact date that this program was established, mm -hmm. but I know that we have over say 16 to 17 HIV AIDS education committees throughout the island. And these committees are run by the community members. Cause we are seeing the community members understand the needs of the community, okay. understand the issues that within the community, and they are better able to tailor programs to suit the needs of the community. So we at the Community Development Department will offer our, our technical assistance along with the financial assistance in sort of planning and implementing the program, but it's the people at the community who will spearhead the ver various programs. For example, we might do condom education, mm -hmm. then we might have a community day. So we're not just saying because it's an HIV AIDS program, we're pushing HIV AIDS at you, but we're doing it in a roundabout way. In that, you get to learn other things that would impact on the HIV component of the HIV. For example, we might have a children's program because okay. we want the children to learn about morals, values, and how to relate to each other. Okay. So therefore, we might have it under the HIV AIDS umbrella, but we are going to do a cultural program. Mm -hmm. And I will mention Grisettes because Grisettes is my home base. Mm -hmm. And for example, at Grisettes, what we did, we did a camp. And that right. camp will have include culture, arts and crafts, moral education, and, and such like. We're seeing that you need to understand who you are, you need to, got man you need to have manners, self-respect, and you need how to relate to each other so that when you, when you get to a certain age, you will know, well, there are certain things I should or I should not do. Okay. You have an understanding of who you are. And maybe you have the necessary confidence to say no to cer certain things. Okay. So that's what the whole aim of the HIV AIDS program is about. Do you find though that, I mean it's great that the government is involved in, in these types of programs, but do you find we're shifting away from those kinds of things being taught at home? Therefore, the government has to deal more with it. I wouldn't say that. I say that the government is an added plus. Our programs are a plus to what is being taught at home. Mm -hmm. Because remember the saying, um, it takes a community to raise a child. Mm -hmm. So we are helping the parents in the home. And then when you come out, you understand that you need to practice. Practice make perfect. Because if you don't practice, you will never get the chance to understand what to do. So we're telling you that when you come here, these are certain things that there are certain life skills that you must have in order to go places. For example, we at the community development partner and at home too will tell you what you need to have manners when you say people say good morning, excuse me please. So when you go to a workplace, nobody will have to tell you, well you need to say good morning. You will know those are things that are ingrained within mm -hmm. you, so therefore you will be doing them. Mm -hmm. And that is what it's all about. We are here to assist with the process. Does the department actually help out those who are directly affected with HIV AIDS? Um, we will challenge you in that direction. Okay. We don't necessarily help you as such. For example, we will challenge you to the, we will tell you about the HIV AIDS food bank and there may be other places that we could tell you where to go to get assistance. But our thing is more about community education. It's like giving people the necessary information more about changing behaviors but we, we have to understand that a behavior does not change overnight is a process for, so for example that's how we will link now our community impact program our community technology program in the sense of telling you that behavior change mm -hmm. could happen and we're going to give you the necessary skills we're going to empower you we're going to enable you to get you to think differently and to change maybe some negative negative practices that you might have. For example, I might be a mother having three children. There's nobody, I'm not working. There's nobody to support me. What do I do? I might be engaging in behavior that might be detrimental to my health. There comes the community development department offering a skill-based program at the community center, for that example. That can help you get out of that yes, negative behavior. But instead of just giving you the skill, we, we offer you an opportunity that you could generate income. We are also saying to you that we have the community center. You may be able to come to the community center for three days from about 9 to 12 and let your clients come that you could generate a little income. Okay. So that's the basis of it too. Is we have a center there and the center is for everybody to use. So we're encouraging the public to come out to use the community centers. Because within those community centers, we also have the internet. And persons, for example, you may not have the 
the printer at home. You could right. come to the center and say, well, I need to have my school based project printed. I Can need anybody to do... come? Like yes. if I needed something? Yes, you could okay. come, yes. <laughs> we encourage you to I come. I don't have a printer. So. <laughs> but not to deviate from the H and right. program because mm -hmm. all that is all of that is interrelated. Mm -hmm. So just showing you how our programs are. It's a holistic program, mm -hmm. basically. They're You're interrelated. With every part of your the mm -hmm. community life. Mm -hmm. okay. And the community is at the forefront of encouraging people within their communities to do things differently. Right. Positive behaviors. That's what it's all about. What is Community Dance Fest? Community Dance Fest is a dance program. The aim is to encourage people using dance as a process of empowerment so that when you come to the program you learn something else you're not just coming for dance but you're coming to fine tune your skills learn mm -hmm. the fundamental techniques of dance because remember i said a lot of them will be self-taught right. so this program is in helping you in terms of life skills mm -hmm. in terms of like for example if you go to interview what you should and should not do. All of that is a part of community uh, we, dance. Yes, fest. that's what I'm we're thinking. Just dance. Focus. No, that's what we're trying to remember. As a dancer, I might want to do something else, mm -hmm. and therefore, how do I go about doing that? For example, this year, what we're trying to do is that at the end of the dance program, well, you won't be seeing. I just went to dance yesterday. Nothing. We are hoping that at the end of the dance program, we have an understanding of what the participants want. This is this also is tied into our application form where you complete, and it will say, for example, um, you might say you might be interested in the youth development program. Mm -hmm. We will try to challenge you in that direction. Okay. So that is for persons who, for example, you might not be doing nothing after the program. You're not so sure you want, but at least that is something to keep you or Something online. else that you can keep going mm -hmm. until going. you find work or, or something like that. Correct. Okay, so who's eligible for community dance? Um, the age range is, we have three groups, two, no, two categories, juniors and seniors. Mm -hmm. And the youngest, I think we have five plus, and the oldest is about 16 plus, 30, 35. Okay, mm -hmm. wow. So, and then the, we, a group is two, the small group is two to three persons, and the big group is about 20 plus. We, we're going to have the registration process that will be from September the 1st to the 30th. Mm -hmm. So when we say registration, it's like we're trying to encourage all genres of dance to participate. And you would have seen that at our launch, where we had the Latin, the ballroom, the salsa, and such like, and the liturgical. So we're appealing to the various dance groups out there that this competition is for you. All genres of dance are invited to participate, mm -hmm. and we would have sent letters of invitation to all genres of dance to the schools, to the churches, to the established dance group, asking you to participate in community dance, as this being our 10th year. Wow. So we want to see the various genres of dance competing in this dance festival. So how is the competition broke down? Is it like on a weekly basis? Once you, the registration uh, process is over? Then we go to the so auditions. Oh. And the auditions will be in a community This sounds very centers. fancy. Auditions and, and stuff. Yes. Wow. Yes. So the auditions will be in community center. And we were trying to have a say the auditions will be at say about four community centers because what the program is that we have broken down the program into four zones mm -hmm. the St. Michael's the South and the North zone and the Christ Church zone <laughs> that right. shows you the, 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 <laughs> right. the amount it, that comes from St. Michael and Christ Church that they have their own zone wow. right so we, it has been broken down into zones we were hoping to have the preliminaries at a set location right last year we had the preliminaries in the community but what we want to do is we want to flame the process. So we are hoping that we can have it at one or two schools in that they have the stage and everything ready so that we can flame the, the preliminaries. Okay. And then after the preliminaries, we go on to the zone finals. And right, the zone so finals. The zone finals now that you, you break it down to the four zones mm -hmm. and you pick the best. Correct. Zones, right. A certain set go I think it's about twenty or so. Mm -hmm. But then it has to do with the number of applicants mm -hmm. that we get at the registration process. And then we move on mm -hmm. to so the finals right so right. finals so finals which will be like the semi-finals mm -hmm. oh, okay and, all right, and then and the winners of those the top the, the best in the zone finals then go you go on to, to the grand finals which will be january the 21st 2016 at the Garfield sobers complex but let me say within the zone finals those who reach in the grand finals you'll be given a stipend of about 500 dollars to assist you with the costume and such okay. like and That's throughout good. this process, we will be having coaches attached to each group, mm -hmm. help assisting you in fine-tuning your movements and such like. 
January the 21st, that date was very specifically chosen? Yes, that was chosen, I think, in the first year of the program. That's Earl Bell Day. day yes. Day. Right. Uh -huh. So that was chosen as the day for dance fest. Okay. Last year we would have moved it, but then they saying that we need to put it back on this, this uh, due to the significance of that day. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Sounds really good. Now, if anyone is interested, they're watching and they're interested, how do they get in contact? How do they apply? Oh, and I forgot to say that we are now on social media. You could go on our Facebook page or our website and you can see the registration form and the rules. Okay. And you could also get a chance to see some of the, the winners and the past groups over the years and such like, and some pictures of the launch too. So you get a chance to see what is happening in terms of that so that's through the years and for this year who are some of the because putting this together you must have some very well-known dancers and choreographers in barbados helping you out um the the administrative aspect is like with is i in terms of the department's end and we have a number of officers within the department who would assist like lana phillips elliott Angel Martindale, Michelle Walker Nurse, Yolansky, and the list goes on. But I would just want to say thank everybody at the Community Va Development Department for assisting in ensuring that we have Community Dance Fest 2015 2016. But I cannot forget also our resor other resources. Mm -hmm. There are the National Coordinator, Dr. John Hunt, and everybody would know oh, him yes. from the National Cultural Foundation. And then we have as, as our chief coach, Alicia Hurley. And she is a dancer in itself. I think a lot of people will know about mm -hmm. Alicia. Those are the two persons who would be, in essence, looking at the technical aspect of the program, ensuring that the coaches do what they're supposed to do and the judges do what they're supposed to do as it relates to the dancing and such like. I, on the other hand, would just be the administrator. <laughs> And then you said early that you don't dance, right? <laughs> right, good. And then we would employ a number of coaches. Mm -hmm. For example, I know over the years we had Jennifer Seeley. I can't remember all the names, but we had some persons in the community who know about dancing, who have their various dance groups. And that is what we'll be doing this year again. We're probably sending out a call, letting persons know that we're interested in, the, in getting, selecting persons to be judges and coaches. Okay. So we're looking to improve in terms of the, the, the skill sets that we have for the program and so just keep making it better mm -hmm, year better year. as it goes and along congratulations on your 10th year running mm -hmm. and i'm sure it will be bigger and better so thank you very much jackie but we're not going yet <laughs> chef tosh is going to come and we're going to do some sampling yes breakfast will be served we'll be right back on breakfast in barbados all right breakfast in barbados spices have been flavoring the pots of Barbadians for over 25 years. Available island-wide at all leading supermarkets, MIS spices come in a wide variety of flavors like black pepper, Cajun spice, bacon bits, crushed chili flakes, coriander powder, cumin powder, curry powder, basil leaves, celery salt, and blackened spice. Celebrity chefs and mixologists use MIS spices to enhance the flavor of their creations. MIS products making it special for you for you for you for you Breakfast in Barbados. We're back and it's time to sample what Chef Tosh has done for us. Tell us what you've done today. Right. Today is an open fish sandwich done with Brunswick uh, sardines in the mustard sauce. Mm -hmm. But this is a cheese egg yolk. Um, covering I have here. Okay. So it's cheese, egg yolk, um, tomato, onion, all the um, herbs you can have there. And it's uh, lightly spiced, so you all guys could taste it. And then also I have an aioli here made from Swiss products. Uh, we have the Swiss um, ketchup and the Swiss um, mayonnaise mm -hmm. together with that. And it, it was made just with a little bit of lime to counteract the rawness that you might encounter with the sardine, but you shouldn't. Okay. Come on, Jackie. <laughs> We're going to use our fingers this morning, all right? And the verdict is... Mmm, it's good. 
I'm impressed with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. can't believe sardines. I cannot believe I'm eating sardines. I cannot believe I'm eating sardines. That was good. We're back on Breakfast in Barbados with mixologist Damien Williams, and he's going to put together a fabulous <laughs> breakfast shake for Jackie and I. All right, Damien, what are you going to do today? Yes, actually, I'm going to use the Dimes Pomegranate. I've used it earlier this season for the crop over season, that is, and I know it mixes very well with rum. But today I'm going to combine it with a few fruits and uh, vegetables that I like, especially. You know, the bell pepper, the red one, you know, is uh, carotenoids, it boosts your immune system, mm -hmm. as well as strawberries, the same thing. And of course, uh, Allen Vir, you know, probiotics, which is the good bacteria that destroys the bad bacteria in your intestines. And a mix juice, a mix fruit, dimes, uh, fruit juice. I'm going to try this. I never used it before, but I mean, it's going to give me the same type of effect I'm sure so without any further ado let me get straight to it dimes pomegranate I'm going to use about three ounces two ounces of the mixed fruit so I'm going to just use my Ellen Ver yogurt so you don't need to use a lot the, no. The bell pepper. No, no. It has a distinct flavor and I just want to get um, the juices out when it's blended. And I'm actually going to strain it okay. after. A little simple syrup for those who want it a little sweet. You don't have to use simple syrup because the strawberries and the berries have a little sugar, not mm -hmm. too much, but it's according to your palate whether you choose to or not. Is this something you would try? A shake in the morning or you're more like a, I don't know, a sandwich for breakfast, eggs for breakfast type <laughs> person? A shake in the morning, yeah. Yeah, this would definitely place the eggs and bacon and all that stuff, the healthier side. I mean, despite, mm -hmm. I do use eggs every morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need protein. So how many it's, strawberries are you going to use? I'm just going to use three whole strawberries. Okay. That looks wow. just about right. And you're right, the color has totally changed. Yep. It's a nice, a little girly color, nice and pinky. Who's gonna go first? Go on, Jackie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Guess first. There you go, you can hold this. Mm I'm really fussy about my personalized mason jar. I feel so bad now that I only brought three. I don't have one of my own. There you go. Thank you. I haven't really given it a name, but I guess we can call it the Santosha <laughs> Berry Breakfast. How Santosha Berry that? Breakfast? Okay. Yeah. Are Tell you ready, ladies? Jackie? Yeah. Oh my goodness. How, how That's good. really good. Yeah. You're not that just saying really that, good. right? No. Yeah. I would never. Thank you. It's good. It's something you would use every morning? Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. perfect, perfect. This is my kind of thing. And it has a little pat in terms of the pepper. There you go. Just a slight hint of it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, Dimes and El Ver. Perfect combination. Well, thank you very much, Damien. <coughs> and that's it for Breakfast in Barbados. Cheers. Morning's here.
CBC TV 8 in beautiful Barbados. Welcome to Cap World Home Shopping, a safe, easy, convenient way to shop from home. Hey, it's Sarah, and I'm here in our test kitchen with the latest addition to the Nutribullet family, the Nutribullet RX. This machine has 2.3 horsepower motor, which is by far our most powerful unit to date. And with all of these accessories, it makes not only cold blasts, but also hot soups. I'm going to make one of the many blasts I love from the Nutribullet RX book. This is our almond ally, and in it is spinach, bananas, dates, almonds, and I'm just gonna top it off with some almond milk. And also you'll notice I added some blueberries. They're not in the recipe, but I love blueberries. They're high in antioxidants, they're low in sugar. So they're the perfect addition to any blast. This blast contains five servings of fruits and vegetables. That's almost all you need for an entire day. Next, I'm just going to twist on the extractor blade and then flip the cup upside down and load it onto your unit. This button here is going to turn green and the smart technology is automatically going to start and automatically going to turn off when the blast reaches its perfect consistency. The hands-free technology lets me clean up the counter, put away some ingredients, and know that every time I will have the perfect blast. Wow, look at that consistency. Let's give it a try. The banana, the dates, they go really, really well with the blueberries and the spinach. You guys are gonna love this. All right, now it's time to make a soup. Here I have all the ingredients for our comforting tomato basil, which you can find in the Nutribullet RX book. I'm just gonna add in some almond milk. And already in here, I have tomatoes, basil, cashew, chia seeds, garlic, salt, and pepper. Make sure that you're only using the soup pitcher when making soups. We are going to load the pitcher onto the base the same way we did when making a blast. The only difference is we have to hold down that green button for two seconds until it turns red. When it's red, you know it's in the seven minute soup making mode. Wow, look at the steam coming off of this. The Nutribullet RX has helped me incorporate so many veggies into my diet, and I know it's gonna do the same for you. Order now, the Nutribullet RX, $649.95. For a limited time only, get 10% off this item. Every day it's the same old thing. What's for dinner? Did you forget to defrost again? Or are you stuck with dry, rubbery microwave meals? Or unhealthy fast food again? And how about the hassle of cleanup? Well, those days are over. Introducing the revolutionary Flavor Wave Turbo, the breakthrough miracle oven that cooks all your favorite fresh and frozen foods to perfection, up to three times faster, with less fat and virtually no cleanup. With the Flavor Wave Turbo, you can take frozen solid foods right out of the freezer, and in just minutes, you'll be savoring incredibly delicious meals. The Flavor Wave Turbo is so versatile that it bakes, broils, roasts, toasts, grills, steams, browns, fries, reheats, and more. Well, I don't have to worry about taking something out in the freezer and thawing it for the rest of the day so it can be ready for dinner. Uh, with the Flavor Wave, I just take it out of the freezer. It's really fast, it's really easy, and it tastes great. I don't use any fats or oils in the Flavor Wave Turbo, and that's quite surprising because you don't need them. It cooks all the juices in. You don't need extra garnishments on it. It just comes out wonderful. The secret behind the Flavor Wave is the unique combination of halogen, convection, and infrared technology to quickly cook food evenly and thoroughly from the inside out. 
It's the same superior culinary system utilized by five-star restaurants, but now you can have it in your own home. Look, conventional cooking methods leave your food soaking in fat and grease, but the incredible flavor wave cooks without any extra fat or oil. Plus, its tornado-like airflow actually forces off excess fat, making your food leaner and healthier than ever. Best of all, when you're done, it virtually cleans up after itself. No wonder the Flavor Wave Turbo received the prestigious Cooking Club of America seal of approval. Roast juicy turkey, mouth-watering steaks, savory chicken, and grill the best seafood you've ever tasted. Even bake delicious cinnamon buns in minutes. Order now. The all-new Flavor Wave Turbo. For $25.95. This month's special price is $325.95 while stock slaps. Now you can shop online using your K Shepherd card. Choose it, charge it. It's as easy as that. Does cutting an onion make you cry? Well, a slice of bread can save those tears. Tired of wilted vegetables in your fridge? An ice bath can fix that. Too much salt in that recipe? One potato and problem solved. Chef Tony here. You know, Grandma always knew best. In fact, I still use her kitchen tips today because they really work. These and thousands of other unique kitchen tips are in my amazing book, Great Kitchen Secrets. Chuck full of more than 5,000 fantastic tips, this book will save you precious time in the kitchen and you'll stop throwing that cash in the trash. Want to keep herbs fresh for a whole year? Here's a secret. Grandma always made herb cubes. Look here, a burnt on mess like this? That pan is history. But with one dryer sheet, you go from this to this. I'll even reveal Grandma's secrets to the lightest, fluffiest pancakes. This book has so many tips that help me save time, money, and even my health. When I want my fried foods to absorb less fat, it's easy. I just add a little vinegar. I love these tips. Does your sour cream or yogurt look like this? Yuck! Store them upside down and they'll last longer. Ice cream covered with frozen crystals. A little plastic wrap will stop that. Plus, see why you should always cook your turkey upside down. And how to make a tomato sauce less acidic. I'll share these secrets and more in this one-of-a-kind book. Order now the Great Kitchen Secrets book. $39.95. For a limited time only, get 10% off this item. Don't you wish that big old circle would instantly become a sexy V? Hi, I'm fitness celebrity Jennifer Nicoli. Think you're too busy to work out? Think again. Now there's the Ab Circle Pro, the fast, easy way to lose those love handles and get the sexy sculpted body you've always wanted. As a personal trainer and a gym owner, I highly recommend the Ab Circle Pro. My clients were able to lose weight, lose inches, strengthen the core of the body in a short period of time. And most of all, they had fun doing it. I think it works well and so fast because it works the hips, it works the waist, you can feel the movements. You just see the pound shed off. Look, ordinary equipment just goes back and forth but doesn't burn fat. These machines burn fat but won't flatten your abs. But the Ab Circle Pro combines cardio and abs to burn fat, while its unique friction-free track uses the momentum of gravity to target your upper, middle, lower abs and obliques, all in one circular motion, firing your core like no other machine has ever done. The Ab Circle Pro gets you off the floor and has three levels of resistance, so it's perfect for any fitness level. Imagine losing inches as you watch TV. Best of all, it folds for easy storage under the bed or in the closet. Order now the App Circle Deluxe Pro, only $499.95. For a limited time only, get 15% off this item. Now you can shop online using your K Shepherd card. Choose it, charge it. It's as easy as that. Frustrated with piles of makeup and no easy way to keep them organized? Tired of running late because you can't always find what you need? Do your favorite cosmetics end up broken or spilled? Introducing the Glam Caddy, the ultimate cosmetic and beauty organizer. Glam Caddy instantly transforms any makeup area from being a total mess into a glamorous place to look your best. 
Watch all these cosmetics, beauty supplies, makeup, and daily jewelry fit into the Glam Caddy. Amazing! The Glam Caddy can hold up to 200 pieces. There's a place for everything, and everything has its place, right at your fingertips. Its small and compact design with durable crystal clear compartments make it easy for storing and easier for finding. Keep your cosmetics conveniently organized on the counter, or store them underneath to keep your counter clean. Simply spin, grab, and go. Glam Caddy is not only for makeup, it's also great to store and organize perfumes, jewelry, lotions, personal grooming, medicine, toothbrush, hair accessories, and so much more. No more digging and dumping. Glam Caddy has a spot for all your essentials. Everything can be seen and is easily accessible. So you can always find what you need when you need it. Order now. The Glam Caddy, $111.95. Now get 10% off this item. You're sitting at home and saying, you know, it's my genetics. I have huge thighs or I have big hips and there's nothing I can do about it. Well, you're wrong. You can reshape your body. Get ready to get slim in six weeks. You can lose up to 25 pounds in six weeks. You can have slimmer hips and thighs. You can have a flat toned tummy. You can get slim in just six weeks. Since doing Slim in Six, I have lost 84 pounds. I've lost 25 pounds. I went from a size 16 to a size 4. Slim in Six doesn't just get you slim. It helps you stay that way. The secret to Slim in Six is Slim Training, a proven technique that combines cardio and light resistance to burn fat fast while you tighten, sculpt, and shape the muscles underneath so you get lean and toned without bulking up. You'll see rapid results in your biggest problem areas. Flatten and tone your abs in six weeks. Slim your hips and thighs and firm and lift your butt and get lean toned arms and triceps that don't jiggle. Slim and Six will slim you down and totally reshape your body in just six short weeks. During week one, you'll start with Debbie's Start It Up DVD that has you burning off the fat after your very first workout. Week two, you'll ramp it up and learn how to slim, tone, and sculpt your entire body without adding bulk. And for the ultimate in slimming and toning, you'll burn it up with a final push of four weeks of fat burning to reveal your beautiful, slender new body. You'll also receive Debbie's step-by-step -step success guide featuring her secrets to help you reach your weight loss goal fast. You'll get Debbie's personal step-by-step -step nutrition guide that takes the guesswork out of eating and lets you eat your favorite foods and still lose weight. And we'll include three additional bonus items for free. Bonus number one is 24-7 internet support for one full year. Bonus number two is Debbie's Slim and Limber, her flexibility routine that lengthens and stretches your muscles. And bonus number three is Debbie's Slim and Six-Pack Advanced Ab Routine designed to transform your tummy into the flat, sexy abs you've always wanted. Order now, Slim and Six, $119.95. For a limited time only, Get 15% off this item. Now you can shop online using your K-Shepherd card. Choose it, charge it. It's as easy as that. Hi, my name is Zoe and I'm Topic Light Blonde. I recently heard about Topic and I was a little bit skeptical just because my hair loss situation isn't your traditional kind. Mine is alopecia areata. It's an autoimmune disease where you lose patches of hair. Uh, it varies from month to month, so it's something that's really hard to attack in any way. Um, but finding out about Topic, I was wondering if it was going to work for me since I had no hair in certain areas to bond to. Amazingly, it really worked and I feel like a completely new person. I'm really grateful and I appreciate this product so much and I think that everybody with alopecia shouldn't be worried, they should definitely try it. Topic looks really natural. Nobody would even guess that it's in my hair. Amazingly, it really 
work and I feel like a completely new person. I'm really amazed by the visual. It's like my hair is back again. Order now! Topic Hair Fibers Plus Toolkit, $129.95. Get a free service with each purchase. Where's your pain? I right hear, right here. Both elbows. Take on the pain. Introducing CopperFit. Advanced cutting edge compression garments designed to help relieve muscle and joint soreness. Where has this been for the last few years? If I can put this to the rigorous test of an NFL athlete and it can work for me with all the joint pain that I've had, it'll definitely work for you. I pushed this product to the max and it performed great at every level. Helps reduce swelling for faster recovery. Copperfoot has helped me a lot and I've seen a huge difference. The pain I was having literally felt like someone was stabbing me in the knees. I have pretty much lost all hope. They said you need to quit, it's not going to get better. I refused. To me, I feel really good inside and I've accomplished something and Copperfit has helped me do that. The Copperfit high performance compression fabric is blended with therapeutic copper, essential to your body. Two technologies combined to help provide support for muscle soreness and aid in recovery and performance, faster recovery, and guaranteed relief of muscle aches and pains. I definitely recommend it to anybody to give it a try that has pain. I noticed that a couple of days after, it didn't really hurt. And I was like, wait a minute, is this real? This is very real. And just with the Copper Fit, honestly, for the first week, I've noticed results. Comfortable, lightweight compression sleeves, tough enough for any active lifestyle. Construction isn't light duty. I couldn't pick up a gallon of milk. Within a few days of using the Copper Fit, mobility in my arm was 100% better. It's almost like winning the lottery. Order now. Copper Fit Knee Sleeve, $49.95. Does your computer run Come slow? On. Come on. Or just freeze and crash? No, no. Does it take forever to start up? Still waiting. You need the amazing wind cleaner. The easiest way to get all that hidden junk off your computer. Simply plug in our unique USB and with just one click, wind cleaner starts working automatically. It sorts through your hard drive, eliminating useless files and programs. Within minutes, that slow computer is running like new. Order now, the wind cleaner, $62.95. Hey, it's Vince, and I'm cleaning up my act with my new stain remover, Invincible. Check this out. Invincible will remove virtually any stain on any hard surface, and even on your softest fabric. Say your kid spills juice on their favorite dress. Hey, accidents happen. How do you think the kids got here? A few sprays of Invincible, and it starts to work without scrubbing. Old dirty lampshades, make them look new again. Spots on your ceiling, not anymore. Nasty bathroom towels, just spray and be on your way. With no harsh chemical bleaches, use it on things like pet stained carpets. Impossible to clean spilled red wine without even scrubbing. Even outdoor jobs like stained siding, weather beaten backyard furniture, and dirty stucco walls are no match for Invincible. The secret is the millions of oxygen bubbles, which penetrates the stain to blast it away. Let's go to the test lab and see it in real time. We got beets here, all right? Some iodine, and here's some spaghetti sauce, all right? Mix it up. Zoom in on this camera guy. Let's do this in one take. If I could only clean up all my troubles as easy. Go ahead and rub it in a little bit. All right, we have a perfectly white shirt. Stains come out as if they weren't even there. It is amazing. Order now, Invincible, $59.95. Now you can shop online using your K Shepherd card. Choose it, charge it. It's as easy as that. Greetings, I'm David Wolf. If you love your Nutra Bullet, you are going to be crazy about our new dessert bullet. Let me show you how the dessert bullet works. We've got frozen bananas, frozen pitted cherries, bottom from the store just like this, and then I've got some raw organic cacao nibs. 
Okay, what I'm gonna do is take some of these bananas, just pop them in here. And bananas are a great source of potassium, yes, but they also contain a very high amount of tryptophan, so they help us to produce those feel-good chemicals like serotonin. Now, cherries have a high antioxidant content on top of those amino acids that help us feel so great and help us produce those neurotransmitters. So I'm gonna take some of those cherries, pop them in here, and then over here, there's our cacao nibs. Now, this is the number one antioxidant food in the world. It's extraordinarily high in magnesium. It's rich in anandamide and phenethylamines, and these are more feel-good chemicals, so we definitely are gonna be feeling good after this recipe. Okay. Check out how delicious that looks. But let's see how this tastes. Wow, that is amazing. Not only is it amazing, but it's raw, it's vegan, it's gluten-free, dairy-free, and absolutely delicious. With the dessert bullet, you're gonna be able to create incredible desserts just like this that are nutritious. In fact, they're so healthy, you'll be able to have them every single day. From the makers of the original Magic Bullet and the Neutral Bullet comes the all new Dessert Bullet, the 10 second healthy dessert maker. The Dessert Bullet turns ordinary frozen fruits and flavors into a rich, thick, creamy, delicious dessert that tastes just like your favorite ice cream and dessert from the store, but without the added sugar, dairy fat, and all those calories. With the Dessert Bullet, you can make over 90 delicious, decadent desserts all under 200 calories in 10 seconds or less. Watch, just start with a frozen banana, then add frozen pineapple, and in an instant, you've got the perfect ice cream texture. Then in goes some frozen berries for a delicious strawberry treat. Then more frozen banana, pecans, and finally some delicious natural chocolate. And just like that, you've got three completely different flavors for a fabulous banana split that has no processed sugars, no dairy fats, it's only 175 calories, and made in just 10 seconds. The Dessert Bullet is a break through innovation that will change the way we eat dessert forever. Look at this mouth-watering chocolate nut sundae. It's loaded with vitamins, loaded with nutrients, and like all the amazing desserts made with this one-of-a-kind machine, it tastes incredible and is actually good for you. With the Dessert Bullet, there's no delicious, nutritious dessert you can't make. Look at this decadent chocolate caramel parfait. Made from scratch, it's dairy-free, gluten-free, and is only 195 calories. Or what about this refreshing frozen lemonade? Made of all natural ingredients, it tastes better than any frozen drink you've ever had before, but has no processed sugar and no artificial colors. But the kids will never know the difference. And the next time the kids ask for ice cream, not only can you make it in seconds, but this old-fashioned chocolate dessert, like dozens of other kid favorites made with the dessert bullet, has no processed sugar, no food dyes, no dairy fats, and no nasty corn syrup. Plus, they're even loaded with ingredients that are great for their digestive system, as well as strengthening their bones and teeth, but taste like ice cream. So again, they won't taste the difference, but you as a parent will know there is a difference. But here's why kids really love the dessert bullet. Look how fast, fun, and easy it is for them to make their favorite cones. And the best part is the dessert bullet takes up no more room on your countertop than a coffee mug, and takes just seconds to use and seconds to clean. Watch, just pop your favorite frozen fruit and flavors into the dessert bullet and your fabulous, nutritious, delicious dessert is ready to enjoy in an instant. Then just separate, give it a quick rinse, and you're done. How easy is that? Order now, the dessert bullet, $259.95. Now on special for $199.95. My name is Billy Blanks, and I'm the creator of Taibo, and I've been teaching for over 37 years. Taibo is basically a, a, a martial arts system, exercising system that, I, that came from Taekwondo, boxing, dance, calisthenics, all kind of exercise combined into one form of exercise to give a person a chance to be able to have the best workout that they can have. Today I'm here to talk about PT 24-7. It's a product that uh, I created when I was in Japan. 
And I have been traveling and training the military for almost 11 years now. And PT training is physical training. So I said, you know, let me come up with an exercise that not just, you know, boot camp people do or people in the armed forces do, but let me give an exercise that everybody can do throughout the world. PT 24-7 is an exercise and a program that gives a person not just cardiovascular workout, but it gives you strength training, it gives you everything that you need, dance, it gives you calisthenics, it gives you boxing, it gives you martial arts. I believe it gives you everything that a person needs in a workout, and it's only a half an hour long. I think anybody could do it. You know, the target that I'm targeting with this exercise is the world. What comes in the box with PT 24-7 is you get the resistance bands, you get the gloves, you get six DVDs, you get a calendar that shows you how to start each workout, you get a guide to show you how to eat properly. You get all this stuff in one, so it creates a system that you can take the chart, put it on the wall, start off your workout with the basic training, teach you how to do all the basic moves, how to work with the gloves, how to get comfortable with the workout, and the next thing you know, it sets you on a path of giving you a chance to learn how to work out six days a week. When you put on the PT 24-7 bands, you put the gloves on, which makes you feel like a fighter. Then you take the bands, you strap them to each foot, and strap them to your gloves. And then you get the resistance training. So now I can move around the floor. I'm not just standing in one spot. I can move here, I can move there, I can jump. You can just about do anything you want to do with the PT 24-7 bands and get a great workout. So with, with PT 24-7, you get the basic training. You learn how to put the gloves on, you go through all the basic punches. And it's a guide that will give you everything you need to get to the next video. And it works you to the next video. It takes you to level, 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 level each day or each, each week you want to move up. And it gives you that guide, the guideline. I think that's really important to work out. And then I think PD 24-7 will definitely help you build your confidence up and give you that self-assurance that you will get in good shape. I put, I took the PD 24-7 and put people on a workout that we did like a six week program. And within the six weeks, we lost close to 900 pounds and about 400 and some inches. So to know if it's gonna work, it's only half an hour a day, it's, it's proved itself. You'll see people on the infomercial, you'll see people on the videotapes before the workout that'll tell you everything they did, how they look when they first started, and telling you it, it's gonna make a change. And most people don't think you can get that in half an hour, but you can. And it's not a workout that's gonna kill you, it's a workout that's gonna make you pinpoint the areas that you need to do and the things you need to do for a workout. So I think people are gonna really have a good time doing it. Order now, Billy Blank's PT 24-7, $199.95. For a limited time only, get 15% off this item. Visit our K Shepherd outlet on the top floor for our monthly in-store special offers. You can also visit us online at Carol TV for more details on our special offers. Beautiful Barbados. Good morning and welcome to The Mix. We're really mixing it up this morning. I'm Peter Aline, keeping you company here sitting in for Tisha Hines. And you know, what a weekend it has been. I, the whole country is just feeling the emotions of a really, really rough weekend. 
any time that you know we lose members of the community who still had so much life to offer it affects everyone and the images that we see on the news our heart hurts for those parents and we have pictures of them in happier times five girls four of them no longer with us and one in the hospital fighting for her life and we can assist by doing some knee time and when I say knee time I mean getting down on the two knees that the Lord has given us and pray pray for her pray that she gets better and also we would like to pray for our country pray for Barbados we we seriously need a healing right now and perhaps now would be a very good time to do it and think on your families I don't know about you but when things like this happen I just want to take those that I love and just hold them close to me and you know make that call if you haven't spoken to someone in a long long time do it now give them a buzz how are you doing how are you feeling you know because in truth and in fact it is a critical condition that we're all in right now and speaking of Perhaps that would be a good segue for Hal Linton and I think it's critical condition with Chantal Lane, yes. So let's listen.
critical condition is right. Um, certain age that you get to, you go bring out the readers because I want to let you know what's happening on the mix for today. We take a look at what's dominated the headlines over the last week in a segment we call The Big Story and Ryan Broom from our News and Current Affairs Department joins us to fill us in. The winners of the Barbados Talented Teens competition and the Mr. and Miss Caribbean pageants are here and they will be giving us a glimpse of how they wowed the judges over the weekend and walked away with the titles. And if you thought it was only happening at Crop Over this time, think again. We've got Sand, Sea and Soca and it's back. It's featuring a living legend, Dr. Anthony Gabby Carter. Producer of the show, Shari Pollard, is here to tell us more about it. And we continue highlighting writers this week. Remember, this month, October, is Literacy Month, it's Education Month, and we will be highlighting local author Mark Gibson, who's in to share his book, Bridgeland, Volume 1, the first installment of this contemporary suspense graphic novel and I have it right in my hand and up for discussion we have developments in technology and pop culture how they create a disregard for reading or do they that's today's question is reading a dying interest to discuss this we've invited Janelle Mitchell uh, arts entrepreneur we's, we've got DJ Simmons, spoken word artist and sales associate at Chattel House Books, Erica Hinkson. And we're going to welcome them in just a little bit. But I think I need to hear a little bit more of how Linton get us into this Monday. have been flavoring the pots of Barbadians for over 25 years. Available island-wide at all leading supermarkets, MIS spices come in a wide variety of flavors like black pepper, Cajun spice, bacon bits, crushed chili flakes, coriander powder, cumin powder, curry powder, basil leaves, celery salt, and blackened spice. Celebrity chefs and mixologists use MIS spices to enhance the flavor of their creations. MIS products, making it special for you, for you, for you, for you. My grandmother always used to say 50 years in 50 days, and a milestone like this don't come wrong every day. The Barbados 50th Anniversary of Independence Coordinating Committee is inviting you to express your feelings of pride and industry in an original song must not have been previously produced, performed, or entered in any other competition and should incorporate the theme, Pride and Industry, Celebrating 50. The song should promote heritage, achievement, and leadership. Any genre of music may be used. Entry should include the lyrics and basic musical accompaniment. The winning writer will receive Barbados $5,000. 
for song competition rules and to download an entry form, visit gisbarbados.gov.bb. Forms are also available at the Government Information Service and all post offices. Submit your entry to the Barbados Government Information Service by 4.30 p.m. on Friday, November 13. It's 11 after 11, and up for discussion, we said that we would take a look during this month, Education Month, we'd look at reading, and we'd look at how perhaps the pop culture has affected reading, or has it? Hmm. Let us chat with our guest this morning on The Mix, and you can join the chat as well. Remember, it's The Mix at cbc.bb. Send us your emails, and we will certainly be glad to share. I have arts entrepreneur here with me, Janelle Mitchell. Welcome. Thank you. We also have DJ Simmons. Hey, hey, nice hey. Nice to have you with us. <laughs> Great to be here. And man. Erica is a lady I only get an opportunity to chat with via the telephone, but yeah. she's always very helpful from Chattel House Books. It's nice to talk to you, Erica. Not Erica easy. Hinkson. So, question is, is all the pop culture, the rapping and the iPad and the iPod and the this. Has it taken a beating on reading? Who would like to go first? I think I can start <laughs> on <Yeah>? this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the feel I'm now dealing with. I would say that it has in some ways, but we're trying to find a way to still make it work and adapt with the times as with the e-books. But in the fact that it has taken a toll in terms of some parents do not quite see the benefit of reading. I say to some that pass by and say to the children that want to come in the store, you know, the children trying to drag the parents into the store in Sky Mall for the books, and they say, no, no, we don't have any time for this, no, let's go on, let's go on. And, they, and yeah, I see they, they bought the child an iPad or mm -hmm. an expensive cell phone a $400, $500 device and are not mm -hmm. willing to buy a $10 book. So I find that quite strange that some of the parents would comment they don't read. But I said, what about e-books? And I try to introduce them to the e-books. Well, they have all these fancy devices mm -hmm. now. Maybe they can give the e-book a chance, you know? Yes. So that's the area we're trying to get persons to understand that technology and reading can still go in harmony. Mm -hmm. And the books, the e-books are a bit more affordable than the print books. So maybe as we introduce I persons to the technology. I'm so sure about <laughs> that because <laughs> I've been noticing some prices, some, prices. On some that are on pre-order. And I'm thinking to myself, these will soon be a house and land. Oh, wow. You know, because they really mm -hmm. are expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd have to see what the price of the actual paper book, which yes. is some of us still like to touch, yes, I you still know, like paper how books. much they, they, they would be. But your whole business, mm -hmm. I think, um, all your creativity, all your passion has gone into teaching children about reading, about mm -hmm. reading and to love reading. So how would you respond? Um, I do think that reading well the digital media and stuff has enhanced reading because we find a lot more children go to their ipads um you know wanting to download the latest books and also is is also your approach because we have to allow children to take lyrics mm -hmm. and then recreate their own um creative ventures because sometimes we think that reading only exists in a physical books but as we know with the with the technology we have to see the benefits of it so we can't say that is you know putting books on, on the back burner because reading is always going to be something that we have to do whether it's in the formal the form of a book mm -hmm. studying you know we, we have to look at it as a creative venture so say for instance you make it into a game it's all about your mm -hmm. approach it's all about how you teach children to engage with words and not so much the literature. Have they changed though? Have kids really, have kids changed? You mm. know, I know that um, there came up a, a point in time when my son said that he's no longer going to read books because they no longer have pictures, which is not <laughs> oh. like the, the graphic one. 
Um, and so I had to get creative and, and get the goosebumps and those that would really mm -hmm. capture his imagination. So have children changed that much? I don't think children have changed. Um, it's just that what's happening is we underestimate children a lot, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, children like to be visually stimulated, so they like pictures. However, there is an incredible book that people love called Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Mm -hmm. The children, uh -huh. they love that, yeah. right? Yes. It's the form. Yeah, it <laughs> looks like a journal. <laughs> exactly. Yes. The whole format of that book, if people don't know, yes, it looks like a diary. Mm -hmm. It looks like a journal. It has these little doodles that you mm -hmm. will make. And I believe it is the format. So it's the process and the thought of the author and the publisher mm -hmm. of presenting the print book in a format, in a way that the children will be attracted to that is what's causing the children now to be like, well, this is cool, mm -hmm. I could work with this. Okay. So the children aren't necessarily different. It's just that we have to also produce work to keep the children mm -hmm. interested. Right. Mm -hmm. I will share a very quick story. I was doing storytelling. There mm -hmm. it is, Diary of a Wimpy yes, Kid, yeah. yes. Oh, that's yes. pretty good, she be showing the ball, boy. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we I, try to be. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a storytelling for these, these group of boys at a school, right? And it was a book that was from the Oxford University, but it, they did a series of books for young children. Mm -hmm. And the cover of the book had a black boy about nine years old. He was a secret agent. And from the time I opened the book, I saw the, they saw the cover. I think his name was, was, um, was Joe. But the time they saw the book, the boys leaned forward. They was like, wait, that looked like me. Mm -hmm. That's wow. me. Mm -hmm. So they were immediately interested in the story yeah. because it was a boy their age, their color looks like them, but with the dreams and the aspirations that they're probably going to keep thinking about. Right. So it's the content, mm -hmm. it is the format, all right. of that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it fun, definitely. Yes. Are there enough books for children of color? Yeah. And can, all right, let's even take it further. Local. Local, mm -hmm. local. books. I think that the they locals, can, you know. The locals are really doing an amazing job. Yeah. They've been producing, it's every other week now, we mm -hmm. get a new author in the bookstore. We have over 250 local wow. authors' books now. As for the children's authors, we have about 25 local authors' books, and most of the characters are children of color. Mm -hmm. So that's always great and what exciting. What sort of topics do they, do they handle? Well, we have a wide range of, wow. of things. Okay, so um, Roberta Reed took on the topic of when I'm afraid because she realized that her son tended to be afraid of a lot of different things, the dark, you know, and when children are going on to taking on a great life journey or an experience, sometimes they need help dealing with these things. So she had a little book on when I'm afraid, a monkey, you know, a lion, a lamb, a little lamb, you know, <laughs> because book to me. Yes, there's the Zana series. series. She looks at global warming. A global warming. warming. You know, what? pollution, the environment, we finding them in the fight. There's, there's Lottie, Lottie the Black Belly Lamb. Lottie the Black Belly Lamb is one that we took on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Milk making. All on engineering, milk making, all about his Pine Hill Dairy experiences. So there is no. So many things true excuse mm -hmm. for children not reading it's just you have to mm -hmm. encourage them yes and let them know that you know it's more fun sometimes yeah, yeah. than 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 a, than a computer exactly. i mean i remember spending my summers well we didn't have computers back in those days <laughs> but i spent my summers curled up in a corner with a book mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and books were friends yeah. characters mm -hmm. were friends the whole nancy drew series even mm -hmm. though i had no idea <laughs> what the topography of the place she was living mm -hmm. was like mm -hmm. It was me mm -hmm. having an adventure with her, you know, and so how do we then beat the computer and beat the Kindles and so on and get them touching? Because I feel physically, mm -hmm. you have to touch it physically first. I don't think we have to beat it. I think we have to join, join it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. because um, we know that the evolution of the digital media is going to con continuously evolve. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that we are going to get away with. Can so we, we coexist? We can coexist because sometimes some children, there are some children who would go to the iPad or Kindle or wh whatever to read the certain books. 
but there's another book especially for the diary of a wimpy kid mm -hmm. they want that physical contact because they want to feel as though it's their diary that they're reading yes. into so it depends on the specific um topic that's being addressed the specific child as well because right. many Every children are different. yeah exactly so it, 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 it all depends on the individual and the affordability as well mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and i think the interest of the parent yeah. Yeah. let us not forget mm -hmm. because if a parent is not into <laughs> books yeah not into Are reading sure? i'm mm -hmm. not sure if they're going to spend the time to read a book to a child at the beginning to do all of the characters and have fun but i would really and truthfully love you to try it but that's where i was going to say that's yeah. where smart art soon comes in yes. if it's something that you can do send them send the children to us because mm -hmm. we make reading more fun and engaging for the six to ten year olds and also for the 11 to 16 year olds dj and myself we're going to be doing something called youth chat which is creative nice. writing so also with the reading there goes the writing and the creativity yes. right so exploring what happens beyond the books what ages are we talking about the here? youth chat is we going to be 11 to 16 yeah year that's olds. a good that's a good um catchment area yes, because definitely. sometimes they forget all about exactly. reading at yeah, that age you know, yes. we have to drag her in on some of the things that we're mm -hmm. doing we could all of us have an interest in this and this is definitely a teaming up effort mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there are persons out there that are trying to help with especially with the children and then yeah, extending to the parents because i was just telling Janelle, we could, um, we've been, Child House Books, we've been going across the primary schools across the Caribbean and nice. reading with the children, nice. bringing in some local authors mm -hmm. to read. Right. And it's all about, as you keep saying, making it fun and mm -hmm. creative. So, you know, asking them to use their imagination, mm -hmm. bring out this character, okay. you know, spell this word to get you the books, see, understand the books in a different feeling, way. You see, feeling a little guilty <laughs> now because <laughs> I read a couple of times at the Barbados Public Library mm -hmm. to the little kids, but time is not my friend yeah mm -hmm. and i would love to go back and do that because uh, you know they were really really, really interested and yeah. it was a lot of fun but when we come back <sighs> hold your thought hold your because, thought. because <laughs> when we come back um we'll continue to take a look at this and look at those older ages who tend then to perhaps slide off to video games and television <laughs> Your week just got better with season two of the Tony Thorne Show. With new faces. All the way from Vinci. What's up, it's a girl, Nikita. Yeah, this is Peter Ram. This is Marvin. Yo, this is King Baba. I get to all the watch it Tony Thorne Show. New experiences. And new topics right here on CBC TV 8. So tune in. Good morning. Coming up tomorrow, Tuesday on Morning Barbados, we will share with you at least five ways to keep your plants happy, you know, when droughty conditions exist. Yeah, when those taps are slow, the plants can still be happy. So Stevenson Ski will talk with you about that. And Dr. Andrew Ford will be along to share some information on something complex. Too complex for me to say it. So he'll tell you all about it tomorrow on Morning Barbados. Join us. You see now, there's a difference. Um, finding out now that kids touch the electronic books first. nowadays mm -hmm. first and then touch the paper. Mm -hmm. Who knew? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so okay, teach me. Teach me then. Um, how do you go about this then? Well, especially for our platform, like I was just, Janelle and DJ and I were just chatting. We have an ebook platform. So, Child House Books, we have childhousebooks.com. And we have gotten ebooks from across the world for this, especially, you know, persons that are very averse to all these ebooks for children. Right. Scholastics, especially, is a big, right. a big publisher. And they found creative ways to get children into reading the same comic type format, pictures, everything. And those are all in digital format. So everything that used to get in a book, 
you're getting in a physical book, you're getting in digital format, and even the local okay. um, children's writers are converting their books now to e. So you have the, all the facilities there for the children to, um, in in in, in book, yeah, yeah, interactive. So you yeah. have the um, copy and paste, highlight this mm -hmm. certain section. If there's a built-in game in with the book, that sounds audio, cool. I would like you know, to touch a like word to and the, the word actually. is spelled out to you or sung it out. Right. Or it's very very interactive. So it's like it's just. Like Janelle said, bringing a game into a book, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. making the book a whole new creative right. world okay. that, they, that they might not necessarily have with the paper. The paper books are still amazing. Right. And you can do that in talking with the children. But for parents that maybe don't have the time to sit down and read with children, it's like having your own friend yes. there to play with and yeah. talk to you about yeah, the book. As an only child of book, I'm telling you, books were definitely my friend. Mm -hmm. But now we were talking and you wanted to say something when we were talking remember yes. yeah. about mm -hmm. the 11 to, to, to 15 yeah I think? Um, 11 to 16. I, I have some experience tutoring um, children in creative writing every year at the NCF art camp and we are talking about reading all the time mm -hmm. but also at the NCF art camp as you were alluding to earlier there are some of the age group 12 to 16 that love to run off and play the video games mm -hmm. and stuff like that however when they get them into a group Right, and we all start working together. They start to produce a lot of quality material. So we also have to think of our children as writers as well. Mm -hmm. And then we, ca we can help them by editing the work and children can be uh, attracted to the ratings by their peers. I want to ask mm. a wicked question. <laughs> do it, do it. Every right, yeah. There you go, <laughs> there you go, I like it. No, really, mm. who writes the better mm. story then? The ones who are having fun with other people's creativity with mm. video games are the ones who are creating their stories themselves through books and so on. The one who's creating the stories themselves. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I find that there, there are people that like to, you know, use the, the video game stuff and bring in this, you know, stuff from other places and use that. Mm -hmm. But when you actually get some way to create, they, they actually get a tangible representation of their imagination, mm -hmm. boom, then gone clear. Then they, they no think that mm -hmm. anything is possible. possible. Yeah. Yeah. See, even with grown ups, that's what I'm trying to tell them. Mm. That when you have, uh, you know, these movies these days which are based on books, I don't want to see them <laughs> because I've read the book. <laughs> the and, and the movie is usually I not as good as a bit disappointing. You are nowhere near my imagination. Yeah, you cannot capture everything in, a, in most movies. Yes. Some, a few. You know, directors have done it. Yes. But um, a movie, an hour and a half, two hours, you cannot capture all the There's details. No way. And, it, and And the thing is with a book, too, you can put your own thoughts and your Im own imagination of how you would imagine this character to look. What, mm -hmm. would this, yeah, what would this character actually be doing, you know? But with a movie, everything is there given away to you. It's done so done easily. They walk you. right down so that yes. you don't really have to think or put any effort into it. It's not because you don't imagine it yourself. Exactly. exactly. One, and then one, I one, one, sorry, one thing that I, I struggle with too is audio books. I always try to think, are audio books actually helping or not helping? Because similar to the movies in the audio book, mm -hmm. the narrator is kind of giving that character the voice. Mm -hmm. So right. you might have a different voice in your head. But some people are more attracted to the audio book because it, it is what they're familiar with. Yeah. Listening. It in the, car. the first um, and audiobook I read was um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That, mm -hmm. I actually really enjoyed that as an you audiobook. Had Rich Dad, Poor Dad <laughs> as an audiobook. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, for those of you who don't know what Rich Dad, Poor Dad is, it is, I think, financial genius mm -hmm. in yes. how to teach your family to literally, hopefully, become financially mm -hmm. wealthy. Mm -hmm. um, and it has some really great yeah. ideas in there, but I d you can't highlight an audio book. I, I tried to, see it, to <laughs> listen to it as an audio book. I wanted to s experience what, what was the difference there. Some persons yeah. told me that they do love audio books. Though, yeah, that the when time, they're driving along in the, a lot in the car. There you go, or see? Somebody said to me they were listening the to audio books. How the, the rich gym. teach their kids yeah. about money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Rich dad, poor dad. Yeah, so yeah. it works for some people. I mean, I, we do have. Um, regular requests, persons coming in and saying, when are you all going to start carrying audiobooks? Mm -hmm. And we said, well, we've been oh. looking into this um, with some international publishers. We've been mentioning to the Caribbean authors, maybe you might want to try putting it in mm -hmm. an audiobook. Because some, some older persons the cannot Bible read is a as well. very good book to have as an, um, as an audiobook. Mm -hmm. It really is, because it, it covers from beginning to end, you know, yeah. and they do it for you. So, but that was... 
I had the cassette version. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me show. Right. So, uh, <laughs> moving from here mm -hmm. into say what you do, because mm -hmm. I think all of you are wordsmiths in a, in a, in a way. Mm -hmm. yes. Erica more tends mm. to sell the, 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 mm. the words, but you're all wordsmiths. Is there an age that you just can't get them to sit down and to read something? Is there that one age? I wouldn't say that you just, it depends because there are the three, the three-year-olds who can't sit still okay. for an extended period of time, but they can sit still depending on the way you're giving, yeah. telling the story. And what you can do is because we know that they can't sit still for say more than 20 minutes. 20 minutes is a long time. That's yeah. a long right? time. So what you can do is to build in interactive Activity. um, activities, activities in it. So what you can do is lift up the characters, have them pretend to be other characters, and you do a session where everybody is on the move. Good. Mm -hmm. Right? So um, I will say sometimes the three-year-olds, but that's basically storytelling. We go into then sometimes you have some six to seven-year-olds who just want to bounce off of the walls because, you know, we have children who have ADHD and, yes. and all these different learning difficulties um, and what's not, right? But you have to find ways to always keep them engaged. So you mm -hmm. always have to keep it moving. You can't stay too long on one specific section because there are different people in, in an environment. You know, you mm -hmm. want them to learn. So it's all about catering to each individual at once. Okay, so that's difficult I, though. I, I to, to marry the generations mm -hmm. too, Peter. Yeah. Um, sometimes they will play word games. And mm -hmm. a favorite word game of mine, are probably yours, is Animal Person Play Good Center. Thing. Oh, yeah. Yes. My little children <laughs> love that band. And you can one. always tell the ones who are readers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they don't go cat and bat and that. Exactly. They go down and hippopotamus. Xylophone. Teach me things. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. also a very good way to, to warm them up as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, because they, a fun way. They get, the direct, they get a direct um, thing of, <coughs> if I actually had a bigger word, a, a more unique word, you, know, you understand, I would get more points. Yes. So I want to read, you know, I mm -hmm. want to learn the other words exactly. that, and stuff out there. You want a broadening of vocabulary. You want a vocabulary. The eight to ten boys, that's the age that women come in the bookstore <laughs> asking most about my little boy, how, you, how am I going to get him to read? He doesn't really read. He's eight years old. Mm -hmm. He's nine years old. They always come with that. And I said, have you ever tried do it, giving him a comic? Just like yes. you said with the diary of women. Because cause mm. there's a whole host. They've made almost every single topic you can think of as a comic. Martin Luther King Jr. comics. Mm -hmm. You have Nancy Drew is in comic form completely now. Hardy Boys. Any topic. And you're, we're finding that they're liking up Geronimo Stilton. And mm -hmm. he's popping out mm -hmm. pictures and colors and words but the comics it's not childish you know the thing is that it's still keeping them reading and then it, it ex they, they keep reading and going into other genres as well because now the the interest has been sparked right there. we have to we have to allow parents to understand that there are genres the same way there's genres mm -hmm. of movies music mm -hmm. there are genres to books and especially with the boys you have to get them you have to introduce things that are going to appeal to appeal them. to mm -hmm. them exactly that's right? why i got goosebumps for mine yeah. <laughs> that's what that you know the goosebumps movie is coming out and that's no, that's I, I won't that's that's that, no. but, but that's but we said <laughs> this is how we, we did this we said there's the hype now with the goosebump movie right so we put we have in store, okay, if you buy all five goosebumps, get a discount. Or you have these attractive packages right. that we try to put in. Right, so right. people, I know all of them are in ebook format mm -hmm. too. Yes. So the goosebumps are. But you Halloween. see, that's another Halloween. kind of, that's, um, <laughs> <laughs> again, you're mm -hmm. not going to see the same thing I'm seeing in here mm -hmm. with my, with, with my imagination. With books, so, mm -hmm. But I think you know, if we engage them in, in writing, in the creative writing, that allows them to, form a better relationship with reading as well because mm -hmm. it goes hand in hand and sometimes parents don't understand the necessity for engaging children in creative writing and expression because they need to get their voices out and sometimes they don't have that space where they can go and tell other persons so right. when they tap into this it allows them to you know really express right. themselves and build their vocabulary build up you know their culture and let them understand more about what's going on and the critical space. thinking yeah. as well I'm going to say thank you enough. very mm -hmm. much. Thank I am you. sure that this is 
going to be a part two sometime yes because it's a, a, an ongoing discussion but I've got two minutes to, mm. to, to say goodbye so would you all like to do that mm. tell parents out there talk to children and, and get them into reading in 30 seconds um, reading is incredible uh, if you are reading you are sure I, I just came back from Haiti being a uh, representative Barbados at Cari Festa, promoting Barbadian books. And the Barbadian books were, were greatly appreciated uh, as a way to be a star. Authors are stars. They are. So uh, be a star. Time up. Okay. <laughs> so we're encouraging children at Smart Arts Room to rethink, create, and explore their literature, well, their creativity through local literature. If you parents don't have time to do that, you can join us at Smart Arts Room, send your kids. Let's explore reading, writing, creative writing. We have a DJ on board to do youth chat for the 11 to 16 year olds. Ooh. Come out, have fun, expand your creative thinking skills. And that's about it. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Even though teachers are doing an amazing job across the schools, you also need, as a parent, to engage with your children or at least encourage reading in some way. So even if you don't have a chance, you have so many persons, young people here helping your children to read. You can't just rely on, okay, there's, there's common entrance, mm -hmm. you have picture compositions. How are they going to even write and express mm -hmm. this picture composition if they don't even have the, ba the fundamental background there for writing? How, when they get older, are they going to fill out a job application? do a report. Mm -hmm. Reading is in every facet it of is. life and it is so important uh, to get through. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for yes. your 30 seconds, Erica. There we go. And thank you so much. And believe you me, gosh, you kids are so lucky with <laughs> what you have now. I mean, we didn't have such fun with ours. Read. You're going to like it. We'll be back in a bit. What we have in store from Eddie's Supermarket, Eddie's Soul Sale, Eddie's Feed Depot, Edna's Boutique, and LC Variety. The Eddie's Trading Half Hour, Wednesdays and Fridays at 10 30 a.m. on 98.1 The One. Your mind. Give her is for me. Give is for you. Give is for all bitches to show what they can do. talking about reading today and there is a book that I'm finding fascinating on many many levels um, the touchability of it it's nice and smooth um, and also the graphics so before I, I go any further le let's chat with the author and Mark Gibson that's right welcome nice to have you in the mix we were talking um, just a short while ago about the various genres and I was saying that to get my son to read a book had to have pictures mm -hmm. um, and, and this looks like a really great action movie <laughs> but in book form tell me about Bridgeland and I see it's volume one so it's going to be continuing uh, well there's, there's uh, just one more volume volume two to wrap that up mm -hmm. and production on that is currently under, underway um, I'm very fascinated that you said it, it, it seems like an action movie yeah, in book it, form. It does. I funny, funny thing is, originally, <laughs> See? originally Bridgeland was intended to be a screenplay for a feature film. Oh. So, uh, you know, that's, that's part of it. Right. And one comment I've gotten um, over and over again is how cinematic it, it reads. So even for a graphic novel, even for something that, that's an illustrated narrative. People are getting this very, very movie type um, vibe to it when they're reading it. It's like this noir, you know, the um, when it's you very familiar with noir. Yeah. yeah, I love that genre. Um, so you get 
all of the untouchables and stuff in that kind of, oh, this kind of black and white form. And I'm, I'm not kidding. It feels great to turn. You know, it's nice and smooth. So oh, that, that's credit to that, that actually was printed here. Um, nice. Company called Dynamic Color. Mm -hmm. They did a bang up job in really, you know, putting that that book together. Mm -hmm. So credit credit to them. How far would you go for your family? Yeah, that's the that's the entire tagline for Bridgeland. It at its core, it's a story about family. You know, um, basically these two families come into to conflict, so mm -hmm. to speak. One of them is is not so well off, and the other is a bit more well off. You know. And it it takes uh, I guess literary extremes, you right. know that real that real question. What would you do for family? Yeah. We 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 have so much experience in our personal lives with family. Not all of them are good, you know. Some people <laughs> no. don't get along with their families. It happens. We choose our friends, but we we don't choose our family, huh? Some people count friends as family, right. you know. Right. And with this book, it it kind of goes just an exploration of that. So you have. All the major characters are, are, they have their own family. Um, some of them, as the book progresses, uh, get their own family together, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it explores what family is. So it's not necessarily the family you're dealt. So like mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers. It's also about the family that you pick up along the way. You know, you've mm -hmm. got a good friend. This friend is always there for you and you count that person as family. I've often found comics in terms of, you know, the bubbles and so on, because mm -hmm. um, sometimes you're not sure which bubble pertains to who, and then you notice the little hook yeah. because it's such long dialogue, you know. This doesn't have that. This is this is so interesting in terms of of the look, the the the. the drawing is crisp you can see character f fear you know um this is she's just the pregnant lady in the bed or who just had a baby she's so scared she you know mm -hmm. you can see that so the artwork itself is excellent is that you as well no i i can't actually draw stick men so i can't draw a line so <laughs> you'll be good so I, I i was able to find uh, a very talented illustrator um Tristan Roach, who did all the illustration, well, the interior illustration for Bridgeland Volume One. I understand the he's an Addy Award-winning. Um, yes, he is for his yes. for his own um, graphic novel, uh, Spirit Bear. Wow. Uh, the cover was also done by a local artist, uh, Sharice Ward, who did a very fantastic cover. That cover is actually hand painted. What? Um, so then we had she had to um, you know digitize it. Yes. But it's it's all around some very, very excellent work from some very talented Barbadians, mm -hmm. you know. I like that. I, I, I like that it's, it's all Barbadian. We so rarely, you know, get props for the varying talents that we have on the island. I find sometimes just, it's, it's just too music focused sometimes, but that's just, just me. One, one of the things that, I, that jumped out for me when you were speaking to your, to your um, previous guests is how do we get people into into things like reading and so on. Um, Barbadians are very very good at being consumers, yeah. but we, we seem to have this this trepidation in being creators ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. Well, for those of you who might have just come in, um, Mark was 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 telling us about Bridgeland, and he said that it's about two underprivileged teens. Mm -hmm. um, who make a desperate attempt to, to, to rob a wealthy home yeah. and it ends in tragedy. And 12 years later, as one brother lives a successful life built on a lie, doom, 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 and the other brother languishes in prison, -dum 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 -dum, the grief-stricken wealthy homeowner waves a Machiavellian web of revenge and betrayal to destroy the one he holds responsible. Sorry. Oh, very dramatic. I, I actually yeah, like the way you, you read great. that. We should talk afterwards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe get you on board an audio book or something. <laughs> no problem. But that's that's how words come to me. Mm -hmm. um, and you you they have emotion. They give you a certain sense of 
what's happening at the time. And yeah. so, yeah, you know, and it's great. I just, I just love that. So it's a great self-explanatory um, back cover, back page. But to go inside, let's go inside the author's mind. So who is Mark when he's not an author? <sighs> when I'm not an author, I guess I'm still a, a storyteller. I guess boiling it down to core elements, I'm, I'm a storyteller. Mm -hmm. um, I've done a bit of, of work in film locally. Um, so that also occupies my time um, as a screenwriter. Apart from books, what interests you? Video games. Ah. I, like, I play a lot of video games. Interesting. Um, and it's, it's actually kind of fascinating now the, how developed video games have gotten. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, a lot of the bigger titles are very much like interactive movies, you know? And sure, you've got gameplay and that kind of stuff happening, but if the story isn't good, then you don't really enjoy it, mm -hmm. or I don't really enjoy it. So it, it's kind of weird how my interest in writing and storytelling kind of feeds into other areas. Right. You know, I, I would play a game, and I'd, I'd enjoy it a lot more if the story really grabs me. You know, I read a lot of comic books as well. I enjoy watching movies. What um, kind? Um, I like a lot of sci-fi. Okay. Um, I'm a huge Star Trek fan. Um, uh, there's a channel that, that does, um, like every week, a, a replay of some old um, Star Trek Next Generation episodes. Mm -hmm. And I could just sit down and, and just watch those. You From know? beginning From beginning day straight to the end, yeah. 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 Um, Laugh at the goofy costumes and, and the crazy, um, perhaps, you know, incidents. But still, you were there watching it. Yeah, I mean, a, a show like that it, it is a little dated, honestly. Right, but it's a classic. But the story still holds up, you know, and right. that's, that's one of the things I like about sci-fi. Okay, so why should we go out and get Bridgeland? It's damn good. Oh, I love that short, succinct, to the point. There you go. Well, he, what he said, really, it is good. And it feels wonderful. I, I don't know if the readers out there know exactly what I mean, um, but there's a way that when you, you, you hold a book, it's got to sit right in your hand. So thank you very much, Mark, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. And thank you for Bridgeland Volume 1 and looking forward to Volume 2. They're going to resolve some things in that issue, I expect. Everything suppose. wraps up in Volume 2. See? There you go. Thank you very, very much. Looking forward to it. Okay. More on the mix when we come back. Grab the farm, get the home, link up the family and come let it go. Grow, well, eat, well, live well, right here in Bim. Yes! Grow, well, eat, well, live well, right here in Bim. No! We don't have to buy all imported stock, cause high nutrition in the food that we got. Plant something, start your own crop, grow something, more cause the put in your pot. It's true, go healthy with the fresh produce, with high nutritional value. It costs less to grow and eat your own food, so gather the crew. Come! Grow, well, you know, sometimes you 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 realize that there are areas that one is not as I don't want to say interested in but not as knowledgeable yeah knowledgeable is better and and for me it's 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 the whole world of glamour and 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 so on F you know fashion and and couture i have some very good friends who shall remain nameless who i guess know the names of all of the designers from france and italy and and, and America, and they know all of the fall lines, the summer lines, and the um, spring lines as well. Um, sometimes I might follow that, and sometimes, well, no. But I always love to see pageants. I don't know why. It's, it's like you see 
the nervous person behind the fashion, but then someone just stands out for whatever reason. And you think, hmm, okay, I pick that one. And many times you might get it right, and sometimes you might get it wrong. But for whatever reason, all of those ladies up there are talented. And we had a competition recently, the Talented Teens. And we are privileged to have in our midst the queen herself. That's right. We say congratulations to Bethany Payne. Hi. Hi. So after all of that, you know, talk to me, Bethany. Um, <laughs> little girl always wanted to, to yes. enter a pageant? No, please. Okay. No, I That's was, different. Yeah, I was always the girl that just used to sing in the shower. That was my studio. <laughs> That's the only place I was comfortable. But my mom is a performing artist herself. Mm -hmm. And being around her, it opened up my eyes to the possibility of becoming an artist Who's myself. My mom is Betty Griffith Payne. I thought so. The features are there. Look at there you are on yes, the night, please. loaded down with gifts <laughs> and awards. Wonderful. So, with a talented mom like Betty Griffith Payne, yes, do you um, would you say then that you find yourself, you know, looking up to her for for how she? puts out, you know, when she goes out there, her clothes and her makeup and, and everything, or, so you learn from mommy. Yes, I do, I do. Okay, even singing, bathroom has fantastic acoustics. It does. Yeah. I right. learned that recently, actually. It does. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah, everybody mm. sounds great singing in the shower. <laughs> but yes. how then, if you are not interested in pageants, did mm -hmm. you get involved in this one? How did you hear about it? Okay, I got involved in pageants in pageantry from singing in the Shore High competition last year at, my Ale at the Alexander School. And a guy called Herewood from the CP school came to me and was like, I am interested in having an Alexander pageant. I think you have what it takes to be in it. And I was quite shocked because I'm not a girl that was, I'm, I wasn't very self-confident. So I was shocked and I said, okay. I took a leap of faith and I said, okay. And after that, I went into the Alexander pageant I think I placed six in the Alexander pageant. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, that really brought down my self-esteem. But then Kofi and Ms. Sharon, the franchise um, holders, they came and they said, I want you in this pageant. Right. And I took another leap of faith and I came and I, I went and I did my best. Right. So that's how I got into it. So what different levels are there? Okay, when I ask that, mm -hmm. just know I'm asking in ignorance. I know that there's swimsuit in some and, and mm -hmm. evening gown in others, and yes. then some have people with talent, and some yes. people don't have people with talent. They, 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 so it's, what was the structure like for this one? Okay, it depends on the franchise, but in Barbados Healthy Teens, there was a project in the beginning but the project was not judged the judging of the project was not put into the show oh yeah because they th i see it as making sense because sometimes some persons do not do their own project and i don't think that's being fair that they were given a project and then on the night of the show have such high mark high, high, high above marks. everyone else and they do right. nothing on the show what what was your project yeah my project was on miss faith marshall harris our children's rights advocate. Interesting. Yes, so what, I was what, a lawyer. What, what about Faith? Um, did you, you know, um, what did you highlight? I highlighted what she did, what she does for our children, mm -hmm. especially the neglected children that no one even looks upon mm -hmm. and how the law just leaves them there. I looked at that part right. and they took it in the form that the judges and the audience was the um, the jury, and I was a judge. Interesting. Yeah. So what? You must get some grade or something, though. <laughs> I mean, for for all the hard work, you know, you get yeah. graded. Yes, you do. You I know do the points, points don't go towards the final points, but so so were they impressed? I think they were, but I'm not sure why I came. Mm -hmm. But the girl Mariah, she came first in the project. In that one. Yes. Okay. What did she touch on? Mm -hmm. What did she look at? Um. Per se, cannot exactly remember her legend. Okay. 
my apologies. No, that's all right. You were focusing on you. <laughs> hey, yeah. no, that's okay. So swimsuit? No, no, no. Okay. No. There Evening was, wear? Yes, there was introduction mm -hmm. after pro after the project on the night of the show. There was introduction, mm -hmm. and then there was um, there was talent. Not for talent, there was formal Of course, your wear. talent was singing? Of course. Of yes, course. okay. Of course. Then there was formal wear, mm -hmm. and then question and answer. And what question did you get? I got the question, um, being in the Car Reef Club and being president, what makes Barbados special? Yeah, that was practically the question. And what did you say? I said, um, what makes Barbados special is our landscape, being one of the only islands fully made up of coral limestone. And they said that's the reason why our water is of such high quality. And also that Barbadians can boast of their exquisite culture, personality, and the crop over season. And of course, our dialect. And of course, our dialect. Yes. yes. Okay. Interesting. There's a question that, okay, people might know of you mm -hmm. and know um, that your mom's Betty. Yes, please. Have you ever found that to not work in your behalf, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. um, people might think that Betty's what you're getting through because Betty's your mom, you, <laughs> you, you understand? Yeah, sometimes yeah. it's like that. It's, mm -hmm. It can be very difficult. How do you deal with it? I just try to look past it and be my own person because I try not to fall in her footsteps. Mm -hmm. I try to put my best foot forward and be my own person. Right. That's the way with it. And do you find that um, you are more confident now after yes, ha please. two pageants under your belt? Yes, please. I yes, am. yeah? Yes. What do you want to do when you've finished with school and, and going into a career? What would you like to do? Okay, I'm looking into marine biology. Hello. Yes. Okay. Yes, please. Marine biology. Yes, please. Tell me about that. Okay, marine biology is based on the study of marine animals and the environment surrounding those marine animals. And I want to study that because I have noticed the climate change and global warming. I want to do something about it. So that's my love. And also, I love animals. So yes, yes, most people do, but they usually like the ones on land. <laughs> no, um, I love all. <laughs> I love all. So do you have your course plotted out on how you're going to become a marine biologist? Yes, please. Right now I'm doing all three sciences uh -huh. and I study French because I plan to go into a university in Canada. Okay. Yes, so you know exactly where... I love this and I ask that on purpose because it's all very well and good to say that you're going to be do something mm -hmm. but I want to see if you really and truthfully you know, are going to do it and you're focused yes, on it and you're pushing yourself in that yes, direction. Yes, I am, I am. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. And it was really nice talking to you. And yeah, we need more marine biologists. <laughs> We're surrounded by water with lots of animals living in them. Yes, so please. thank you very, very much. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. Talented, talented kids right here on the island and I'm telling you Bevany Payne is no exception. She is Miss Talented Teen for 2015. So still to come we've got um, the big story with Ryan Broom. We take a look at the sand sea and soca with the mighty Gabby. It's the mighty Gabby edition and a few performances which I'm sure that you will enjoy. They say the Mayflower to the sacred Indian plain. They submit the Six Nations, these old teas really went insane. Move all them European cities to the people's country as they please. Kill out all the Indian buffalo. We're spreading disease, disaster, and war. But tell them no more, no more. It is time to settle the score. The sun have the night on the run. Massa de Dan. Master de Dan, Master de Dan. Then a man will cry for me. She is too much of a bully. Master de Dan, Master de Dan. America must understand. Master de Dan.
And a very good afternoon to you. I'm Lisa Lord with the CBC News at noon. An early warning from Prime Minister Frendel Stewart that the ruling Democratic Labour Party is ready for general elections when that time comes. Prime Minister Stewart made the announcement last evening to party faithfuls gathered for the South Alive political meeting at the Dighton Griffith School under the theme, Staying the Course, Defining the Future. Flanked by other members of the DLP team, Mr. Stewart declared that the party is ready and can defend its record in government to the people of Barbados when the bell is rung. When the, time, when the blast of war closed in our ears in 2018, you come and you can you will hear the explanations. We're going to run them, we're going to run them into the sea. You take it easy. If I have any disappointments in politics as the leader of the Democratic Labour Party. It is that sometimes I get the impression that some of the people around me can't wait. 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 It is coming. Wait. The Prime Minister says while the economy remains stable, government still has an uphill battle meeting the expectations of Barbadians. The government of Barbados today has the will. But because of what has gone on in our international business and financial services sector, for example, a hole was dug in our wallet in the area of our corporate tax revenue. So we don't, even though we still want to do some of the things uh, that would meet people's expectations, the will is there, but the wallet is not. When you get back there, what people, we invite people, Commerce Minister Donville Ennis has been weighing in on the ongoing takeover bids for Banks Holdings Limited. He says while there is often a huge hue and cry when entities from outside try to take over Barbadian companies, there are some other key issues which must be considered. People get very emotional and start talking about sentimental value of a company. And those things are important. I don't wish to dismiss them. But there's some harsh business realities we have to face. Um, some of our companies, quite frankly, have sat here and, and have allowed themselves to be seen to be undervalued, which is a shareholder matter that shareholders have to get involved in. Um, and I think that on that score, one of the matters that we don't discuss candidly in Barbados is um, shareholders' interests and, sh and shareholders' involvement, active shareholders. Minister Innes says the approach and mindset to shareholding will therefore need to change. So you get a company that has maybe a thousand shareholders on record, but only five shareholders are active. And then maybe five for the majority shares, but people just buy shares in the company for tax purposes or whatever, or to say, well, I, I've got some shares in the company, but they don't go to shareholder meetings, they don't even read the share reports. The more some of them do is just wait until the check comes home in terms of dividends, say, any year. I think Barbados is right for greater um, shareholder involvement in companies and a conversation about how we can get more active shareholders in Barbados. Vice President of the Barbados Union of Teachers, Rick Mark Cave, says the past year has been challenging for its membership. He says this is due to several ongoing issues in the educational sector. And his comments came at the Union's Teachers Week Church service held at the St. Lucie Parish Church. Other activities stated for the week include the John Cumberbatch Memorial Lecture and the President's Reception. As you know, we have not had a salary increase for a number of years, but we continue to teach and go to work every day, every day. We have problems with safety and health at school. We are battling those. We have a problem with, we have the problem with cell phones. And I just learned recently, there's a proposal coming on stream, and it is a proposal to have the cell phones and so forth in the school legally with restrictions. The Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union is continuing to thank its membership in a special way. Over the weekend, the credit union's BlackRock branch hosted an appreciation day featuring mobile health checks and spa services. Branch Operations Officer Harriet Franklin explained that the event is only one of several initiatives for members. She also disclosed that the union is offering loans at special rates for members just in time for the Christmas season. 
our Christmas loans have opened. So you can come on down and make the application for your Christmas loans. We have loads of um, saving products available to our members so that you can uh, save more and invest more along with our competitive interest rates. Well, students of the Holy Innocence Primary School have been taught the importance of saving from a young age. And it was facilitated through Soroptimus International of Jamestown through a seminar entitled Wealth or Poverty, The Choice is Yours. Member Relations Executive at the City of Bridgetown Cooperative Credit Union Limited, Winston Aline, told the students that they must start laying the foundation for their future now. If it's a dollar every day or two dollars or five dollars every week, that is the start. It adds up. So that when you leave this school, then you spend at least 10 years in school. If you, when you finish that, you would have a substantial amount of money saved up. And president of Soroptimus International of Jamestown, Michelle Cave, says one of their mandates is economic empowerment. We wanted to promote entrepreneurship. We want to promote wealth management. And we want to promote it in younger and younger people. We thought to address five schools in Barbados. They are actually in the north of Barbados. Holy Innocence is one of them. We asked COB, the City of Bridgetown Cooperative Credit Union, to please come and join us in really having the children understanding what saving is, what investing is, what creating wealth is. And we enjoyed the session this afternoon because the children really interacted with the idea of wealth management. And we'll have regional and international stories right after the break. I see I got the house painted by looking real nice, Cordy. Oh, I promised to do it for the longest time. Before I forget, there's another lecture coming up that you can't miss. What is one about? Strokes. The Barbados Drug Service and the Heart and Stroke Foundation coming together to put it on. Oh, strokes! That should be interesting. Oh, yeah. The title of the lecture is Stroke Through the Ages, mm -hmm. and it's going to be at the Lloyd Erskine Scientific Centre as usual. When it is? Tuesday, October the 27th. Mm -hmm. Now, the actual lecture will be from 7 to 8 30 pm, mm -hmm. but between 6 and 7 pm, they're providing free blood pressure screening and CPR demonstrations. Yeah, and you'll be able to view displays and discuss therapies used in the treatment of strokes. Mm -hmm. Now, after the lecture, they're providing bus transportation back to the Fairchild Street bus terminal as usual. Mm, sound good to me, Giggers. Don't forget to tell me, Aline. All right. I go on. Uh-huh. But the house look real good in truth, though, Cordy. Thank you, Giggers. <laughs> Thank you. Start your weekend early with Q in the Community Thursday and Saturday. Join us for a special Q in the Community celebrating Education Month, October 31st at the Asphalt Grounds, the Old Bartel Sports Club from 11 a.m. Come for dancing, karaoke competition, and lots more. It's a Q weekend sponsored by Stag, the official bear of Q in the Community, and Jewers Whiskey. Tune into 100.7 FM or join our Facebook page for more details. 
Regional news now. First in Jamaica, the human rights lobby group Jamaicans for Justice, or JFJ, is urging the country to embrace the prisoner transfer agreement with Britain. Under the deal, Britain has promised to build a new prison in Jamaica and repatriate 300 UK prisoners of Jamaican descent. JFJ Chairman Horace Lavey says the country should move with urgency to address the poor conditions under which prisoners are kept. He says the group is strongly in favor of a new prison. I've seen how prisoners are crowded, three and more than three, into a single cell that can barely hold one. So that uh, one or two have to be slung in hammocks above the others. Uh, sometimes they fall out in the middle of the night or, of course, they, they, they have diarrhea or vomiting or something and everybody suffers. So I, I know what the conditions are like. They're atrocious. Uh, and atrocious also is the way that those who are regarded as um, homosexuals are treated in a separate block um, and, and can't even uh, mingle with the others in certain respects. That's slowly breaking down, uh, but it was terrible to the point where they had to sit separately at the back. They couldn't be out at the same time. They couldn't go to the, to the talk shop at the same time and so on. Well, the Jamaica government has granted a license to the Canadian nutraceutical and pharmaceutical company Timeless Herbal Care Limited, or THC, allowing it to cultivate marijuana in Jamaica. This license will be for research and development in keeping with provisions outlined in the amended Dangerous Drugs Act. THC is the first private entity to be granted such a license after the government granted similar awards to the University of the West Indies and the University of Technology, or UTEC. A government statement said that the THC is now able to develop an international global brand for Jamaican medical marijuana by incorporating state-of-the-art scientific applications and methodologies to conduct research on organic marijuana deemed of the highest quality. It said that this undertaking is expected to position the country to tap into the global industry which generates an estimated U.S. $1 billion in earnings. Well, in Trinidad now, the United National Congress members of Parliament, past and present, are now stepping out and openly calling for the party's political leader, Kamala Passard Bessessar, to step down. And leading the call is San Juan Barataria MP Dr. Fouad Kian, one of several UNC MPs absent at the launch of Passard Bessessar's party leadership election campaign on Saturday. The former health minister said he is not supporting her for leader, but she could be the party's chairman. Throwing out a call for the return of UNC founders Basdio Pandey and Ramesh Lawrence Maharaj, as well as Jack Warner, he said you have to build a party that embraces Embraces everyone. A news further afield now. A new report from the World Health Organization says that processed meat can lead to cancer. The World Health Organization has come out and placed uh, processed meats in the same category as, for instance, cigarettes, asbestos, or arsenic, saying uh, that there is a link between uh, processed meats uh, and cancer, specifically colon cancer. So it certainly is uh, quite a health warning. However, there is a certain caveat to it as well. The World, he World Health Organization itself says, listen, you don't have to stop eating these products. However, what we do recommend is that you eat less of them if indeed you are eating a lot. So one of the, in the recommendations, for instance, they say uh, that if you eat 50 grams a day more uh, of processed meat, that could increase your risk uh, of getting colon cancer by about 18%. Now, processed meats was one thing, Robin. The other thing was red meat. So, for instance, beef, uh, for instance, lamb. They say that could also uh, be linked to cancer. Uh, that puts that in a category uh, which they call 2A, which is the second highest category uh, of uh, potentially uh, cancerous things that you can consume. So, certainly not great news for people who consume, uh, who consume a lot of meat. But they say... Uh, that it's very important uh, to bring these sorts of recommendations out, uh, not because any single person might be at risk of catching cancer uh, by eating these things, but they say it's very important, for instance, for global dietary recommendations and regulations, for instance, for country to put together a certain diet that they believe their citizens uh, should eat in order to stay healthy. So for them, it's very, very important that they do expect that some countries are going to change their dietary regulations as a result of the study that came out today. Well, a magnitude 7.5 earthquake struck southern Asia today. Early reports from Afghanistan and Pakistan say that at least 100 people have died. First time that you uh, notice there's an earthquake, the first thing people usually do is to get out to open area. And uh, this was the second most powerful.
powerful earthquake since uh, 1997 that I remember. Uh, I was sleeping on the bed, I fell down, and uh, that's how I woke up with the quake. And, uh, we all rushed outside. The children, women, everybody were shouting uh, until the quake stopped. How long did it last? It lasted about 25 seconds, uh, as I counted. So it doesn't, it's not long, but the devastation, we're still trying to understand the impact across the whole region, aren't we? Uh, yes, well actually, uh, the reason for the uh, vastness of this destruction is because most of the houses located in the areas that were affected uh, more uh, and were close to the epicenter of the quake, uh, they're uh, made of mud and uh, bricks. And uh, we had uh, uh, a lot of rain uh, in the past month, which made those houses uh, more vulnerable to uh, collapse. And uh, this was just uh, something to trigger uh, the houses to fall down. Uh, we have about 1,400 houses uh, uh, destroyed in one area and about 100 houses destroyed in the east uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, all of them were mud houses. And the casualty numbers are getting higher and higher. And sports is up next with Damien Best. Walk a straight line, it's ridiculous. You know yeah. how hard it is to admit that you've got a problem. Walk a straight line. That things sometimes seem to be spinning out of control. How many beers have you had already? I had what, a half a beer? No, you know how seems to understand what it's like, especially family. We know how we sometimes hurt the people we love without realizing it at the time. We know because we've been there. We're Alcoholics Anonymous. If your drinking is affecting your life and family, look us up. We're in the phone book and on the web. We're here to help because we know what it's like. A lot of people think that fast plates are cool, and the girls sure like the guys who write them. But, like so many things about life, you've got to be careful. Having sex without a condom is like wearing a bike without a helmet. It's just plain dumb. It's okay to have fun as long as you're smart about it. My name is Daniel the Lion Fortress, and I'm different. And I'm making a difference. Live up. Love. Protect. Respect. Good afternoon with the Lunchtime Sports. I'm Damien Best. Spinners Rangana Hirath and Melinda Shirawardena shared seven wickets to leave Sri Lanka to a 72-run win over West Indies in the second test to sweep the series 2-0. On day five of the rain-affected match, needing 224 more runs for victory, well, the West Indies were bowled out for 171. The Windies resumed on 24-1 and were looking good early on thanks to a 60-run second-wicket partnership between opener Shea Hope, who made 35, and Darren Bravo with the top score of 61. But once Hope was removed, the middle order showed no resistance, with seven of the eight remaining batsmen failing to pass 20 runs. Herath was the main destroyer, grabbing 4 for 56, whilst Rewardena picked up 3 for 25. Captain Jason Holder admitted they buckled under the pressure. I wouldn't say we have difficulty facing spin, you know, the nature of our wickets back home are, are not too far apart from here in Sri Lanka. I just think um, our patience was lacking at a certain stage of the um, in, in, in innings and we probably didn't trust our, our defence a little bit long, as long as we probably should. I think if you look at the top orders, I think Sri, Sri Lanka's top order batted well and our top order didn't. You know, we were always struggling for opening partnership and you know, we never really got it. And in the middle, middle overs, uh, in the middle partnerships, we, we struggled again. You know, <clears throat> whereas Sri Lanka got some runs in the middle, you know, the top, the top order took the onus upon themselves and made the bulk of the runs. You know, so going forward, we need to look at our top order and hopefully our top order could, you know, put the onus upon, upon themselves and score the bulk of the runs for the team. Um, this is probably the second or third series we had with this, this bunch of guys. And, you know, guys are, get, are getting a feel for international cricket. I think it's important to know that we just keep learning and, as I said, learn as quickly as possible. Well, scores in the match, Sri Lanka 200 and 206, West Indies 163 and 171. Sri Lanka winning by 72 runs. 
Well, lower order resistance from England proved futile as Pakistan won the second test by 178 runs in Dubai today. Starting the final day on 134-3 and chasing an unlikely 491 to win, England were bowled out for 312 with 6.3 overs remaining on the fifth and final day. Stuart Broad with 30, Mark Wood 29 and Adil Rashid 61 made life hard for the Pakistan bowlers as they took the game into the final session before Rashid was last man out. Yasir Saad took 4 for 87 and Zoukhi for Barbar 3 for 53. Scores in the match, Pakistan 378 and 354 for 6 declared, England 242 and 312. UWI have added the 2015 BCA Elite Division title to their T20 crown as they polished off Maple by 9 wickets at the 3Ws Oval yesterday. The visitors had batted first and made 72 to which UWI replied with 254 and 9 declared. Then Maple continued from their overnight 174-4. CBC Sean Green reports. UWI resuming on 174-4. This is Kyle Corbin bowling to Armand Kelman. Back over the top and down to long off to get going. But it didn't last too long after that. Ryan Hines came in and took care of him. Caught at short leg by Anthony Aline for 37. Jamal Griffiths, same script, same result. He didn't trouble the scores. And Hines, cock a hoop, takes off for a jog. Don O'Neill smashing this one from Kenroy Katoy far and wide into the pavilion at Long On. Collis Worrell, though, fell into the same trap of some of the others, gobbled up at short leg for just seven. But his partner O'Neill went shortly after that, drive in and caught a slip by Captain Chadwick Walton for nine. This is Katoy to Sadri de Pisa, who offers simple catching practice to Christopher Ramsaram at Long On. Ramon Graves drive in and caught at point by Jermaine Levy for two, as Maple made 228 all out. UWI then needed 51 to win. Anthony Aline driving officially just over the head of Jamar Griffith of Jed Yearwood for the first boundary of the innings. Yearwood to Aline, driven square through extra cover, four more. But Kyle Corbin didn't have such luck, caught behind off Yearwood for six. Then the winning runs of the battle of Kevin Hodge, swinging away over mid-wicket for six, and that's victory for UWI by nine wickets. After the game, the captain Walton was elated. The fellows have put out a brilliant effort so far. Um, we still have one more cup to play for, and we're going for that one as well. But for the season, we can say it was very, very good to see the players coming out and and performing and bringing home the cup once again. Last year we didn't win any cup, so it's really refreshing to see that we have two now this year. The plan for the 50 of us just to bring it home as well, you know. First club in the history of Barbados cricket to bring home three cups and we won it twice. I say we were kind of rebuilding, you know, because we, we, we lost some players last year and we had some new guys coming in the side, so it was a rebuilding process and to rebuild and, and finish second in the in the 3 competition and then go down to semi-finals and, and, and quarter-finals in the other competitions. They thought that was a good year for us as well in the rebuilding process. Know that we've rebuilt, you know, you know, this year, we've been very good this year. You know, the guys work really hard. We put it together as a team. You know, it only goes to show that hard work pays off. UWI 2015 BCA Elite Champions. Well, in other results, Wanderers defeated Barbados Youth by six wickets. Scores at Crumpton Street. The Youth 122 and 119. Gary Bell bagged 7 for 32, Wanderers 176 and 69 for 4. In the drawn games, at Bank Hall, Pickwick 145 and 279 for 9, Empire 248 and 146 for 7. At Paragon, the BDF 177 and 225, uh, Spartan 215 and 102 for 3. And at SJPP scores, there will be 179 and 175, St. Catherine 193 and 143 for 4. Meanwhile, at Weymouth in the first division, police defeated Carlton to win that championship to regain a place in next year's elite division. That's it for Lunchtime Sports. Up next, the weather details. Community Files. Food vendors, you are reminded that if you want to conduct a food business, you must be registered and be in receipt of a license from the Ministry of Health. Registration forms and licenses may be obtained from the polyclinic in the area in which the business will operate. 
If you operate without a license, then you will be guilty of an offense and will be liable, if convicted, to a fine of $5,000 or imprisonment for 12 months or both. Further infractions will attract a further fine of $200 per day. For further information, please contact the Environmental Department at the nearest polyclinic. And now for a look at your weather details. The current temperature is 31.7 degrees Celsius. Relative humidity standing at 70%. High tide at 2.43 this afternoon. Low tide at 4 minutes past 9 tonight. In the forecast for this afternoon, it will be partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy with a few scattered showers. The winds coming in from the east to the east-northeast at 10 to 30 kilometers per hour. The seas are slight to moderate in open water with swells peaking at 1.5 meters. And in the forecast for tonight, it will be fair to partly cloudy with a few scattered showers. And that's news for now, but do remember to join us for the CBC Evening News at 7. On behalf of the entire crew, I'm Lisa Lord. Have yourself a wonderful day. Coming up tomorrow, Tuesday on Morning Barbados, we will share with you at least five ways to keep your plants happy, you know, when droughty conditions exist. Yeah, when those taps are slow, the plants can still be happy. So Stephen Suzuki will talk with you about that. And Dr. Andrew Ford will be along to share some information on something complex. Too complex for me to say it. So he'll tell you all about it tomorrow on Morning Barbados. Join us. Just got better. It's season two of the Tony Thorne Show. With new faces. All the way from Vinci. What's up, it's a girl, Nikita. Yeah, this is Peter Ram. This is Marvin. Uh, Yo, this is King Baba. We are getting to all the watch the Tony Thorne Show. New experiences. And new topics right here on CBC TV 8. So tune in. Lady Double Draw, what you waiting for? Easy to win, go for a day, easy to win, so come on, Lady Double Draw. And good afternoon to you. I am Debian, and this is Double Draw number 18,773 for the 26th of October 2015, supervised by our auditor Nicolay Collimore from Ernst & Young. Choose the multiplier option to increase your winnings up to five times, except on a match seven jackpot. Just one dollar can make you a double draw winner. The double draw match seven jackpot is now seventy-seven thousand dollars. Now for this afternoon's multiplier number. There are your options. The balls one to five are released from the safety tube into the mixing chamber for a quick spin. Around it goes. This afternoon, your multiplier is one. Now for your winning double draw numbers. Good luck. That first number is three. The second number, 27. The third is eight. That fourth number is 29. The fifth, 19. The sixth number is two. And the seventh and final number. That number is nine. Your winning numbers again. Three, 27, eight, 29, 19, two, and nine. With the multiplier number drawn this afternoon, one. 
The jackpot for the next Mega Six draw is $460,000. The Super Lotto Jackpot is now massive, $3,870,000. Get your tickets today because you have to be in it to win it. Join us again at 4.45 on 98.1 The One for the next Double Draw Show. The Barbados Lottery, supporting sports, youth, and culture. Here's your chance to win it in a minute with Double Draw. Two lucky Double Draw players will be chosen to compete during the 653 Double Draw Show. You could win $550 in cash and fantastic prizes. Enter today. And welcome to The Mix once again. I'm Peter Ali, and I'm keeping you company today on behalf of Tisha Hines. And Tisha, certainly hope that you feel a lot better soon. Now it's Monday, so that means around this time, it's time for the big story. And we have quite a few stories that we have to talk about. And from our News and Current Affairs Department, we have Ryan Broom. So Welcome, Ryan. Hey, welcome. Um, good, to, good to be here. Yes. Under some pretty sorrowful circumstances. Yeah, pretty grim. Um, pretty grim. So yeah. let's look at the story, I guess, which would have been around for the week. Um, the disappearance yes. of, of Mrs. Smith. Any further confirmation? Well, the, the postmortem has to be completed, um, but police have somebody in custody assisting with the investigations into her disappearance. Obviously, uh, they would have found a body, body as you know, at uh, Halton Plast Plantation in St. George. And um, arising from that, then they're carrying out investigations. Mm -hmm. But it is understood that this person that's in custody has some, uh, might have some information in relation to, to where she might be, the, the, funny enough, the, the family had, had increased the reward uh, issue. Originally it was 5,000 and it was 10,000 mm -hmm. only on Friday. And then this information came to light uh, around Saturday. Police did the search and uh, then they found the body. But um, you know, there's always, there, there, there would always be hoping for the best in, in any right. situation. But um, you know, they have this guy in custody right, right. now and that's, that's where it is right now. Okay, how come they say there's someone assisting the police with their investigation and and don't say well it's a suspect well that's just a, a, a I guess a, a technical way that they like to put mm -hmm. it what, what it basically mean is that they're questioning that person mm -hmm. they might have because that person uh, may have information based on evidence that they've gathered based on Intel that they've, they've received that this person might have uh, pertinent information and could possibly be charged right. anytime that you're assisting with investigations usually assisting with investigations usually leads to charge with X crime or Y crime. That's more often than not. Mm -hmm. I can't say in every case, but more often than not. Right. And it's quite possible that that will result in this case and, and the post-mortem will have a big bearing on that. As a journalist, how do you suss out the truth from, you know, rumor? Well, I mean, in, uh, for mainstream media, the, the burden is a lot, is a lot heavier. You have social media now where just about anything it seems goes these days. I remember seeing, uh, for example, early, uh, and the other thing that we're going to deal with, uh, a, 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 a specific number was given in relation to, not to, the, to that incident, and it was not even true. And, you know, so you, you have to, to stick to what, to your, to stick to basics, basically, mm -hmm. and, and, and stick to sources that are reliable and not just mm -hmm. go on here and say, because, you know, when you play past the message, it changes exactly. two or three different times. And, you know, wants to be stick to that, and we have to do that uh, for the for the public because you don't want to alarm people unnecessarily mm -hmm. uh, in in cases. And I and I don't think that's good sometimes when, as as quick and as good as social media is, it also has its drawbacks. But and for for us in traditional media, we have to to maintain that that responsibility. Right. Can you share with us why there seems to have been some? sort of difference in terms of locations um i think i think that's one of those button bound situations um I, where you have some districts that fall in uh, on on the borderline of two parishes i think that in that particular case that's all it was okay. where you have obviously st philippus and george they border each other mm -hmm. and you would have some people that may they say they live in in uh, halton st philip and some may say they live in halton st george it's just it's just a borderline thing and, and okay. some people may see it differently for example i come come from hillaby Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact that even though people think about Hillaby St. Andrew, there's also Hillaby St. Thomas. Yes. So, you know, that's, that's just yes. one of those kinds of, kinds of uh, situations. Okay. 
Well, that was Saturday mm -hmm. um, when we kind of got all of this sorted out. At, and, and then we woke up on Sunday morning. Horrific news. Yeah, that's the sort of thing that nobody can ever no, prepare for. No one. You can As a parent, I can't begin to imagine the pain of the mothers, you know? Mm. So where are we with this particular case? Okay, the, 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 as, we would, as we obviously know, four young women would have lost their lives in an accident, but there is still one, one, the one other young lady who was in that car who is still you know, fighting for her life in the Queen mm -hmm. Elizabeth Hospital. And um, you know, these things are never easy. And uh, any time you have a tragedy like this, having to, to, to interact with family and having to deal with all of that on the scene, it's, it's never, and I, I always tell people that it's probably the hardest part of this profession. And that's, that's to, to go appro approach somebody and try to get a comment when they're grieving. And um, it, uh, the thing is, I, I would always tell reporters to, the best rule of thumb is if somebody says no in a situation like that, respect mm -hmm. the no move, don't push. Yeah. Because you have to respect people's uh, space, respect people's grief. There, there are two arguments that tend to come up when this kind I of would, thing comes up. I would up. think so. Right, because some people say, why are you going to end up bothering mm -hmm. people at the time when they're grieving? And there, and there are some, some families who do want to talk, who do want to say, well, this person was, you know, I remember them because of this and I remember right. them because of that. But you just have, it's hard, it's, it's not easy to strike that balance. Okay, well, we'd like to say thank you to the members of uh, this family and they are with us as we take a look at the uh, monitor because I do believe we have some video. As she was told of the accident, three of the she girls was involved in the crash were from this Long Bay community. Really? Identify yourself. 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 The other, who is fighting for her life at the QEH, her home, just a stone's throw away. Their mothers were too distraught to speak to us on camera. Some of the others who comforted them, family members, spoke to us. And here's what they had to say. We're trying to be strong for them. We're trying to be there for them. You know, because it, it's not easy. Rosalind's daughter, Sherry Ann, went to school with Shakira, Shamika and Nakisha at Dighton Griffith. Very, very fun loving. Very friendly, always smiling, always. And they were cousins, but they live in the same household, so they were like sisters. <laughs> 25 years old, his life just <laughs> Carmely Johnson. My heart goes out to them. It really yeah. does. Um, how does one then? look for evidence um, of what might have occurred or will there always be a question mark of, of what happened? How are the police are going to uh, do this? How are they going to go, go about that? Well, they would have done most of their investigations yesterday, as, as you would in any case when you have a, even a regular accident, the measurements they're done. Uh, you have uh, forensic people who would, would take photos in terms of looking at uh, marks in the road from tire marks and so on to mm -hmm. see, to try to map out what exactly happened and um, that, that, that's, a, that's a, a lengthy process depending on what has happened. You check road conditions in terms of was it wet, all of these other things, uh, what, what other factors and there have been light in terms right. of visibility, street lighting, all of these factors have to come into play in the investigation. And, like and hope of course that the young lady makes it and will in time hopefully be able to say something although sometimes that memory is gone you know True. um so okay mm -hmm. um i understand now that there's another happening with these shares from yeah, bhl it's, it's shifting like, again it's like an ongoing drama with the, with yeah. the, with the bhl um what happened on Friday was that Ambev, that's a Brazilian company, through their through the company, their company, the company they own is Solution SLU Beverages. They they increased the offer uh, on top of what Anson Macal has offered. So Anson Macal had offered five dollars and twenty cents a share. So they've gone up by forty cents now to five dollars and sixty cents a share. And uh, the expectation is that possibly Anson Macal may very well go up too. And uh, this is obviously good for shareholders. This well, is yeah, it's fantastic. Good time to this be a shareholder really nice in banks. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is a good time to have shares in banks. But, you know, it's, it's good for business. Okay. It's, it's good to show that, that a company that we have is so highly valued. Definitely. Um, a lot of, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, another Barbadian company going. But there, that's good and it's bad because it's good that somebody is showing that, that level of interest to put that much investment into the, into the country. So yeah. it's a double-edged sword. I'm sure the, the shareholders aren't complaining. Definitely <laughs> not. All the way to the bank, huh? Indeed. But thank you very much, Ryan. Yeah. I know it's been trying circumstances, and yes. so often you do what you do without thanks, and, and we, we hear thank you. Well, I, 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 well you're welcome, and uh, let me also take this opportunity to express my condolences to the families yes. of those young ladies as well. Yes. Okay, so... Coming up next on the mix, we have a performance, and this performance is from one of the winners of the talent shows this weekend, Joel Manning. He's Mr. Barbados Caribbean 2015. He won along with the queen, Cheryl Ford, but Joel's going to be performing his performance piece for us right now, and I do believe it's entitled, Will We? So will we, Joel? Will we stand by content to observe? Or will we, like freedom fighters before us, sound our voice and be heard? Rice gone up. Gas gone up. Education gone up. Crime gone up. And taxes add on. And taxes add on on top of taxes that were added on. And they told me that nobody would go home. It is a silent night, but it's silence right. As a country built through blood, sweat, and tears slowly slips away. When words can't be heard from the pillars elected, are we to assume that skies are no longer gray? I say pillars and not people, because like their lips, actions are at a standstill. And a giant once woken on the eve of the election, he's again swallowed his sleeping pill. Will we continue to blame the economy for the ever-rising rate of crime, or will we open our eyes to the reality of this time, where crimes are not those of hunger, but ones of passion, murder, and ignorant mindsets, indicating a moral detachment, a slipping away from the values which we once held high, so instead of, how may I help you? It's big man. <laughs> you ready to die? Robbing this country one tourist at a time, and then questioning why the industry is on a decline? Will we stand by content to observe, or will we, like freedom fighters before us, sound our voice and be heard? Will we watch as our young people walk around confused, unsure which sexual orientation they should choose, bombarded by a media presence which subtly forces acceptance as the way, but born a boy or a girl and that's how God intended it to stay? Many claim Christianity can't be the sole judge, but it's not judgment, merely words set out of love. And hence why this premise is not rooted in the words of a single book, at minimum, there's one thing everywhere religion agrees on. I suggest you take a look. What we watch is our education system quickly falls to pieces. Enrollment down, class is cancelled. It certainly doesn't take a thesis to understand that we have, in fact, been placed in reverse gear. And instead of shifting blame, see how best we can make use of a system put in place for over 50 years. Will we stand by content to observe? Or will we, like freedom fighters before us, sound our voice and be heard? Will we pull up our socks and maybe our pants with it, slide on a belt if it isn't a fitted, stop by our beds and collect some more material for the dresses, even though admittedly the right shape and form, <laughs> they'd be looking impressive. But in life, a decision of when and where needs to be made, like at some of these events where the nipples barely catching some shade. It's at this time that collective efforts need to be made if we're to restore pride to this little nation's name. Will we stand by content to observe, or will we? like freedom fighters before us, sound our voice and be heard.
straight and how forward with yours truly. Up on 98.1, the one. I'm going to tell you what we have in store from Eddie's Supermarket, Eddie's Soul Sale, Eddie's Feed Depot, Anna's Boutique, and LC Variety. The Eddie's straight and how forward, Wednesdays and Fridays at 10 30 a.m. on 98.1, the, the one. Your mind. Live up. For more information, contact your local council for the disabled or association. forget that my grandmother was born right there so all right I say I shall go Dr. Anthony Gabby Carter and we had over the crop over season I think an event which tickled the fancy of many um, a, a music enthusiasts, a calypso enthusiasts. And it was sun, sand, and sea, or sun, sea, and sand. Sun, sea, and sand, I do believe. Sun, sea, soca. Why, why do it? Anyway, okay, let me try that again. Put on my glasses. <laughs> I'm reading it. Sun, sea, and soca. I put in sand in there. But anyway, <laughs> Sharon's going to help me. She's the event producer because I understand it's continuing now past crop over, thank goodness. And your next icon will be Gabby. Yes. That's Fantastic. Good. Let's talk about crop over first. Yes. But let's talk about the actual name of the event. Mm -hmm. well, it's sun, sand, sea, sea and soca. Sand by the sun sea there's no sun because it's at night so that's easy to remember it's at night so sun sea soca there ain't no sun no sun because <laughs> it's night yeah so it's not night peter mm -hmm. sun sea soca mm -hmm. there you go okay <laughs> great so go on yeah so the concept came around where we recognized that there was a niche there where some of our what i would like to call icons of the soca arena have not had a lot of opportunities recently to really showcase their talent, their music, explain to us as consumers where their ideas came around, where their music was inspired by, and for us to get that general appreciation of music. So myself and um, Anderson Birch, also known as DJ Timeless, um, we were sitting down by Weiser's a day and they were interested in having an event for Crop Over. And we talked about off of the, the brink of um, BCC's portfolio. Mm -hmm. We talked about that appreciation of music and that we don't have a lot of events that really cater to that for the real avid music lovers. So we decided that we wanted to put together an event that appealed to a more mature crowd because mm -hmm. we thought also a lot of the events for Carpover catered to the young party goer and not for the more mature person who preferred to just sit down and not necessarily have music belted at them, but, but, enjoy, it but anyway. enjoy everything that, yes. that's presented to them. Um, we also want to present something that we thought would be, would be palatable for a tourist. So the tourists can get an appreciation of what we do mm -hmm. because we have a lot of tourists that come here and want to get some of our culture. And we thought that would be a great way to package our culture in a way that they can appreciate 
what music art forms we have here. It certainly was because mm -hmm. not only did you get to enjoy the music, but mm -hmm. you also got an opportunity to chat with them. Yes. You know, to find out just what were they like before mm -hmm. this icon that they are now. Exactly. And you had Alison Hines. Mm -hmm. That was a biggie. Yes. Um, <laughs> Blood. We had Blood. We had Edwin Yearwood. And we also had Biggie Airy. Biggie Airy was actually the one that launched it. So we are hoping to do him again mm -hmm. because it was before a lot of people knew about no, it. Right. So it didn't have as big a turnout because people weren't aware. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking of doing that one again. But we really looked into trying to identify because we had other artists in mind as well. Um, but we looked at trying to really identify those artists that have had a substantial career so far and they've made their mark and we want to give credit where credit is due and give them an opportunity. Something that um, Admiral pointed out to us quite right is that the documentation process hasn't happened no. for those artists. So also to have that opportunity to really document mm -hmm. this process, which is what we're very thankful to CBC for because they've been able to help and assist with that. So I think it's one of those things of also preserving our culture, putting it somewhere where we can go back someday and reflect okay. on it and see what well, it is. Well, let's, let's talk about Gabby. Mm -hmm. um, and just letting you know that you'll be able to see the series because it will be shown on CBC TV 8 and we'll let you know when that's happening. Yes. But the mighty Gabby, mm -hmm. um, I had an opportunity to sit down and, and, and interview him for um, a, a long time to mm -hmm. pick his brains. but. Yeah. What is the environment going to be like on, on, you know, this coming Wednesday? Yeah, it's going to be a very relaxed environment. We offer a mixture of seating and standard viewing. Um, but basically what we do is we, we have a, a new band. It's called the SSS Band particularly for our event, the Sound C and Soka I'm band. not going to fill in those words. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have that band specifically for, because the focus we want also to be on young, upcoming musicians. So we want that in the mix as well. And we want that, that play of generations where the young learn from the old, the old mm -hmm. learn from the young. Mm -hmm. So um, what we are doing is having a very relaxed atmosphere. You come, you sit around, there's food, there's drink on sale. Um, what time? It begin, the doors open at eight, but we actually begin the showcase from about nine o'clock. Oh, okay. So that allows patrons to be able to enjoy some mm -hmm. food and some music and some a light refreshment while they await. Um, and then after that, then we start with highlighting a young aspiring artist that has not necessarily been known across the, the, the industry as a whole, but they are doing something excellent, something we identify as excellent. Okay. And we let them open the show mm -hmm. and let them talk about what they're doing. Then we let the band play one or two tunes because it's a jazz, well, traditionally jazz band, but it's a mixture right. of jazz and soca. And then we then go straight into the artist. The music legend mm -hmm. himself. The and it is Gabby. a very, what I like to call a little more informal structure. Okay. So there is a lot of interaction. The, the artist talks to the audience. They tell you about their story, about nice. their song, where the song came about, what inspired them to write, what, what, who helped them along their journey. Because a lot of us tend to forget how we got there. Yeah. So I think all of that is important. All I the so all too. the partners that play a role in. And that's I what it's think about. that it shouldn't be missed. Mm -hmm. um, you get an opportunity this time around to not only get a wonderful discography that he has, yeah. but also to get an opportunity to be up close and personal. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shari. Thank you very much. Looking for forward me. to that. And this coming Wednesday. up next, yes, this Wednesday, <laughs> and coming up next right here on The Mix, we had an opportunity to get the talent of the Mr. Barbados Caribbean for 2015. His talent was a spoken word. But coming up next is Mr. No, let's see, Jeremiah McCollin. He's Mr. Talented Teen for 2015. There were two shows and all of them get an opportunity to represent Barbados in the regional editions. Right now, here's Jeremiah.
truly, truly beautiful. Thank you so much, Jeremiah. I can understand why he will be um, representing us in the region along with all of the other talented teams that we've had here. Thank you so much for joining us today on The Mix. Still to come on, a, st thank you so much for joining us today on The Mix. I'd just like to say to Tisha, feel better. And on Wednesday, you can look out for some very, very interesting information which will comfort, which we certainly hope will soothe and heal as we take a look at dealing with death and handling loss. Dr. Sherilyn Kelman and Mortician Ian Griffith will be joining us. And we also take a look at the Deacon Soccer Tournament with lots more happening right here on The Mix. Take care now and be safe. Bye-bye. CBC-TV8 in beautiful Barbados. The rich countries have to improve significantly and so do the poor countries. There's no way we can achieve this without both doing their job. The aim of the project is to improve the quality of life of the poor people. I think alleviation is a strong term. <laughs> The first step is to get decision-making down to the bottom, but the second step is to maximize people's involvement in these things. In 1986, Uganda was bankrupt, an impoverished country, a byword for corruption and economic mismanagement. Six years of civil war in this former British colony in East Africa had followed the ousting of President Idi Amin, and its social and state institutions were near collapse. But today, Uganda's economy is widely seen as a success story. But over the last 10 years, the number of Ugandans living in absolute poverty has been cut by half. This edition of Life looks at how Uganda has achieved this remarkable turnaround and asks whether it could now be on course to meet the Millennium Development Goal of halving the number of people living on less than a dollar a day by 2015. Uganda today is a very different country to the one broken by civil war in the 1980s, but it's not yet at peace. The country's parliament has declared the north, ravaged by rebel attacks, a disaster zone. But elsewhere in recent years, there's been a sea change in Uganda's economy. The country has seen sustained economic growth, averaging 6% over the last 16 years. And 4 million Ugandans have moved out of absolute poverty, surviving on less than a dollar a day. In a country where 80% of the labor force work on the land, the change in fortunes for farmers like Margaret and Ampala has been spectacular. In the 1980s, she too was earning less than a dollar a day. Life was very bad, and if you'd seen the house we were living in, you would have known. We couldn't even look after our own grown-up children because our income from coffee was so little. We were very poor. My husband and I were only farmers with no other job. But by 2003, Margaret and her family were earning more than $10,000 a year. The question now for Margaret and many other Ugandans 
is whether this success is sustainable. Ugandans are divided in their response. We had all these competing problems of insecurity and uh, people lost confidence. So when now they realize that policies on the economy were that clear and at the same time there was peace, then that enhanced the position for people uh, to really move the way and make progress that you are able to see today. The economy must grow. People must innovate. People must produce wealth and so on. My contention is that that is not the guarantee for removing mass poverty. But what you do with this wealth determines the quality of life of people. And what my contention is that what we're doing with this wealth has not been good enough to lift people out of poverty. Therefore, the mass, the mass of the population has remained uh, entrenched in the same poverty that we witnessed uh, 15, 20 years ago. It hasn't changed significantly. The target is to reduce absolute poverty uh, to 10% by the year 2017. Now, absolute poverty are those people who depend on less than a dollar a day. Now, so far we have been fairly successful in doing that <clears throat> because um, in 1992, this was 56% of the population. Uh, by 2000, it had been reduced to 35%. So it is doable, it can be done, but it requires fairly high rates of growth. In fact, you require at least 7% of average growth of GDP. Within a year of taking power in 1986, President Museveni's military government began negotiating loans from international donors to get Uganda back on its feet. The loans were conditional on Uganda getting a firm grip on its economy, introducing monetary controls, bringing in trade reforms and opening up its markets. Import bans were removed, tariffs cut and foreign exchange liberalised. Internally, government bureaucracy was reformed and the centralised marketing boards which controlled the prices paid to farmers were abolished. And this new environment encouraged new entrepreneurs like Aga Sekalala. I wanted something to export and I wanted a high value crop and there was an enabling environment. I think it was a government was uh, allowed us to travel and in the past, before that, it was even impossible to travel. But the enabling environment was there. Every day, Margaret Nampala heads off to the four-acre plantation she farms with her husband, Lamaka. Along the way, they pick up their farm workers. Like many Ugandan farmers, they used to depend on growing coffee, the country's major export earner. But between 1987 and 1993, coffee prices dropped by half on world markets, and coffee crop disease slashed their income still further. So, encouraged by liberalization, as well as by food exporters like Aga Sekalala, Margaret and her husband diversified into other cash crops, like vanilla, to try to make a living. When the uh, coffee plantation started drying, so we, we continued to grow more vanilla. vanilla in a large scale. In 1990, we started to grow vanilla in a large scale. We put vanilla and we look at vanilla as the only the source of income. Okay, so we diverted everything to vanilla and we achieved a lot. Vanilla is a crop suited to small farmers. It's difficult, labor-intensive work. The thousands of vanilla flowers have to be individually pollinated by hand. 
Pollination takes up to three months. The people who govern vanilla in this region tell us to pollinate only nine flowers on each bunch, but we pollinate ten flowers, and better still, the pods are bigger. Only a limited number of countries have the right ecological conditions to grow vanilla. Uganda is one of them. When Margaret first started farming vanilla, she was taking a risk. But it paid off as Uganda's vanilla industry built an export market. Vanilla farmers saw their chance when a price war among traditional vanilla exporting countries like Indonesia had led to a collapse in world prices. And hurricane damage had devastated the plantations of the world's major exporter, Madagascar. In 1990, Uganda's farmers produced just 1,500 kilos of vanilla. But entrepreneurs saw the potential in a high-quality product and a market starting to recover. And by 2003, output had soared to more than 30,000 kilos, bringing Uganda $6 million in export revenues. So what was that we needed to do was to mobilize the farmers, assure them of the market, and then form them into uh, organizations. So once they are in, in, in operation, then farmers were organized, were mobilized, we trained them. And uh, once they got money, cash, and it was big money, then uh, the crop just boomed. There was a project whereby I used to work with the, with the extension officers, used to work with these farmers. I had 12, 12 lady farmers. Our main work was to promote vanilla on a smallholder farm. The normal way of life for the Ugandan has substantially changed because he's now got more initiative to either go out and produce more and then be able to earn more. And then this individual who earns more sees the potential of investing his resources, whatever he has got, and is confident that uh, whatever he has done, there is that chance to retain it. Vanilla accounts for only 2% of Uganda's agriculture. But every kilo of vanilla exported is worth 120 US dollars to the exporter and up to $25 to the farmer. The money vanilla brings in has played a key role in reducing poverty among food crop producers. Margaret and farmers like her are already seeing the benefits. But others question whether there are enough farmers like Margaret to guarantee a prosperous future for Uganda. How significant is that vanilla farmer uh, in the economy of the, of the country? How significant is that, that farmer? How many farmers are like that in this, in this, in this country? And, and why is it that it is only in Mukono and in that part that these kind of farmers have come up? What has happened to the rest of the country? Uganda's industrial regime, Uganda's macroeconomic policy framework does not allow for selective industrial policy, does not allow for the provision by government of incentives, tax breaks, tax exemptions, subsidies to the private sector in order to enter specific industries. It does not. And that is why Uganda's economy is an accident waiting to happen. To the donors who loaned money to Uganda in the 1990s, the economic success of low inflation, over 6% growth, and large-scale poverty reduction is proof that their approach to development really works. And now they're coming to see the results firsthand. They have only five plants. They are coming. Who's coming? Yeah. Tell me who's coming. Mr. Wari, who is coming? The World Bank. The what? The World Bank team. The World Bank team. Margaret and her family join the convoy and ride in unaccustomed style to their vanilla plantation, which, they explain, has proved to be a very lucrative venture so far.
A lot, a lot has been achieved as a family because of this vanilla. vanilla we have managed to yeah. teach, so things like uh, taking our children, taking us to, to school, school up to university level, probably having a, a better living compared to any other person. So, we'd like to take you around the, the plantation okay. a little bit. You get the impression that they really, first they really like what they're doing, they are not being told what to do, but they seem to be very committed to the crop because they bring them real benefits. Indeed, uh, I think the, the young man or the gentleman was saying that, in very simple terms, uh, the more they put in, the more they get. And I think it's for a common man, that's for probably the best description you can find in terms of ownership. What the donors want to hear is that their intervention, the economic conditions their loans help bring about, has helped Uganda modernize and develop. But not everyone is convinced. The World Bank um, always comes here, year in, year after, talking about vanilla. And I've had this for the last 15 years, but it hasn't really changed uh, the situation in the country very much uh, because the focus is simply on individuals. But developments about more than just individual success stories and there are other ways life's getting better right across Uganda. Margaret's children still have to fetch water but that water is now clean. Health services too have improved. Margaret's husband has two other wives and 11 other children She's looking after an extended family as four of her adult relatives have died from AIDS. Uganda is one of the first countries in Africa to begin to reverse the HIV AIDS prevalence rate, estimated to have fallen from 15% in 1993 to just 7% in 2002. The well was there, but the water just flowed. Now, for the last few years, we've had pipes. The hospital was there, but not like the standard we have now. They can heal anemia, they can help women to give birth. So the services now are better than from 1986. Even the transport that takes you there is good. Before, when we went into labor, we would just walk there, but now there are vehicles. The standard of living has greatly changed. Education is another indicator of Uganda's progress. Margaret's children are going to school. In 1994, only a third of Uganda's children attended primary school. Today, it's 97% of those eligible. The Ugandan government's universal primary education program and Margaret's income from vanilla farming has helped educate her children from primary to secondary and now beyond. Her family has stepped out of poverty in one generation. The first one is 24 years old and at university in Kampala in his fourth year of mechanical engineering. The second one is at Uganda Christian University in Mukono in the third and final year of his education degree. Uganda's government argues its education policies will help it meet its poverty reduction program goals by cutting the birth rate and making people more economically productive. But there's more than one side to the argument. Our program in primary education, uh, which has increased participation, and uh, people going to primary education uh, is very good also in fighting population growth because an informed population uh, tends to have lower growth rates in the population. So that is also works in the favor of Uganda. If the, 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 the primary education emphasis continues and it continues to be successful as it is now so that uh, we are able to reduce uh, illiteracy and we are able to increase the people who complete
primary education, then that is in its, you know, on its own, uh, will drive down the, the rate in population growth because people delay decisions of getting children. We now have a high fertility. They also look after those they have better. The concentration and the emphasis was on enrollment. Okay, what about retention? What about quality of education? What about infrastructure? What about teacher-pupil ratios? Therefore, you're talking about transfer of knowledge and skills. And there was a study that was done by Uganda National Examinations Board. And this was after f six years of universal primary education. And they clearly say 96% of children in the rural schools could neither read nor write after six years of universal primary education. Critics say Margaret's success just isn't reflected across the population as a whole. In a country of 25 million, they say, there are enormous regional disparities in resources, wealth and government spending. And one third of Ugandans still live on less than a dollar a day. Success, the argument goes, can't be measured simply in economic headlines. Government is simply doing what the World Bank and IMF call providing an enabling environment. An enabling environment meaning ensuring that there are roads, there's electricity, there are telephones, there is a proper macroeconomic policy framework, and there's low inflation. That's all that government is doing. But in a third world country like Uganda, the role of government would be much more important than that. It would mean identifying which sectors will give Uganda a competitive edge in international trade, and then identify the kind of policy and other incentives, policy incentives, tax incentives, or financial incentives, like cheap credit, like tax exemptions, like state subsidies to the private sector in order to lure private investors to take certain risks to invest in certain areas. Now that investment is not taking place because of the lack of these incentives. And because it is not taking place, Uganda's economy most likely is going to stagnate. 90% of this population requires a helping hand and that helping hand is not going to come about through the private sector or through the free market. It is going to come through the intervention of government. And the government is not doing that now. We are trying to see what things we did right, the investments that brought up the, uh, the, the decline in poverty, and some of the things we could have done better. So yes, we have to look at our strategy and even invest in other areas which we might not have invested before. Unless miracles happen and based on really continued hard work, they will probably fall short on many of the 